Mr. Young and Foreign. Kick to the gut! Kick to the gut. 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 Your podcast sucks. Is going on? Okay, you know what we have right now? We have a little technical difficulty. Okay, I think we're good though. Hey, that's a great way to start the podcast, isn't it, Foreign? Bro, what happened, bro? This ah. is not on my side, huh? Ah, yeah, I know, right? My entire system crashed, and then all of a sudden, I'm like trying to restart everything. Okay, okay. Wait, I didn't even hear like the intro of our of our podcast. So oh. I guess it happened. It, <laughs> yes, it happened. <laughs> it all went down, and here we are. How are you doing, my brother? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I guess it's foreign in the building. And it's uh, Mr. Young. Here we go. <laughs> Let's do it. A story of our Good Friday, I suppose. How's your holiday weekend, by the way? Huh? Yeah, I mean, I got no plans, man. It's a long weekend. Mm. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I wish, right, bro, yeah. WrestleMania was this weekend. It should have been this weekend. Right. It would have been so perfect. Yeah, yeah. Like, you get that extra day of rest to get you ready. And, like... It's not even just WrestleMania. There's so much stuff to talk about. Like we've talked about previously, right? Next week will be NXT Stand and Deliver, uh, yes. WWE Hall of Fame. Then we got SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Then we got WrestleMania two days. It's like, wow, so much wrestling. Plus, of course, <laughs> AEW Dynamite, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, bro, like literally WWE is putting on one show per day yep. for the entire of next season. So that means from Monday Night Raw all the way until the post WrestleMania Raw, we got WWE content every single day, bro. Bro, bro it's time to take leave, bro. <laughs> uh, well, you know, working from home, I'm, I'm living the Tai Tai <laughs> life, la, so it's all good, man. Okay, I know all the wrestling I want. I've never pictured, I, I didn't think I would ever have to picture you as a Tai Tai, but here we go. This is where we are in 2021. Yeah, this is where this is the end game, bro. This is, this where is it has the come end game. To. Uh, let me say hi to everyone in the chat right now. The shadow, how are you doing? The shadow says stand and deliver, but y'all sitting. Ah, yo, we got Joker, no Joker in the house. Uh, what's up, bro? Lavin, hope you're doing well. Yeah, man. Um, uh, I didn't average, know he average ninety-five. The crash he, he, no, no, he didn't. Everything was good. So, okay. uh, average ninety-five. How are you doing? It's good hey. to see you. Uh, in, in the chat. Good to see new people on the chat. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, average, of course, aka legit on my Twitch. So he hangs around on my Twitch as well. He's always like, "Yo, I love the podcast. Finally, good to see you here." Oh, nice. Oh, we got some crossover. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, it's like some someone from Peacock watching WWE Network for the first time. <laughs> Peacock. Oh my god. <laughs> thank it's, God we got no Peacock, bro. <laughs> yeah, thank God we don't have to deal with that stuff, right? Um, yeah. it, it's just the WWE Network for us. But okay, today's show, we want to talk about Stand and Deliver because next week we'll focus all our energy on to um, WrestleMania itself. But before we get into the preview proper, is there anything that really stood out for you on Raw or on AEW Dynamite this week? Okay, I gotta let something, get something out of my chest. Yeah. Um, we are two weeks away from WrestleMania, right? But yeah. does it really feel like we are on the road to <laughs> WrestleMania um, like at this point in time, right? Raw is supposed to be really exciting. You mm-hmm. got all the hype building up. Yeah. I remember even even as recently as two years ago. Remember that pull apart that the the, the women had. Yes. Ronda Rousey all all like getting handcuffed into the freaking police car and beating the shit out of each other. Like it was exciting. Yeah. Ronda Rousey broke the police car glass. Remember? Yeah. It yeah. was very exciting. This year it seems like okay lah. The main event scene is quite well built. It's everything below that sort of like last minute put together don't you think correct and i think it is something that we brought up from last week's episode mm. um it's it seems as if the road to wrestlemania has been so condensed mm-hmm. as if like uh from royal rumble onwards they had this weird detour uh elimination chamber went his own thing the miss had a one week title run yeah fast lane um, fast lane and i guess um if everything was leading up to WrestleMania, it's good. But I just felt like a lot of the things kind of got in the way of mm. WrestleMania. And finally, when they're focusing on the cut, alama, three weeks left only. <sighs> yeah, I mean, okay, you compared it to something like Stand and Deliver, which is quite well built, I feel. And like we said, like, we are going to go and deep dive into NXT. All right, uh, uh, but, but do, I do have one uh, one comment regarding the bill for <laughs> NXT, right? Uh, very confusing. Uh, confusing? This, 
this elimination battle royal to decide the uh, first six competitors for the gauntlet to see who becomes the number one contender for the yeah, North yeah. American title. Oh my god! Okay, so that was it's what, okay. You I, know, I feel like was, that's just a way, and, and we'll get into that later. But it just feels like a way to um, keep something fresh because Gargano, technically, I know he's in a field with Loomis, kind of, mm. but. I'm thinking Loomis will just win this and then they can continue their feud at uh, Stand and Deliver. Like, that only makes sense. And then you have the whole Indy Hartwell being in love with Dexter Loomis deal <laughs> also. All this weird ass. Okay, But the thing about NXT is I can always feel uh, confident mm-hmm. that every time I watch an episode of NXT, there is either going to be great wrestling action yep. and there's going to be some sort of uh, propelling forward of a storyline. Mm. Uh, Div Royalty, let me say hello to you. Welcome to the chat. And uh, hey. yeah, if you're listening to this on Spotify, wondering what chat are you talking about? Well, we are also on YouTube. We've been doing this live stream. Have you heard? Come check us out <laughs> on Friday afternoons here in Singapore time. Uh, just follow our socials. We'll keep you updated. But okay, let's go into Raw real quick. Anything stand out other than the big biggest news that uh, Average95 just brought up? Yes. Uh, well, we've got to start with that, right? We've got to mm-hmm. start about what the hell just happened with the Hurt Business, bro? Is this a <sighs> swerve? It has to be a swerve. It can't be anything else, right? You're, you're hoping it's a swerve. Okay. Honestly, I'm like, good. Because Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin haven't been doing much. And I wonder if this is just a way of making Bobby Lashley be his own man. Obviously, he's still going to have um, MVP with him. But, but, mm-hmm. then who shows up at the end? Baron Corbin, the quintessential um, hired gun. Okay, bro. If, mm. if you guys have been, you know, watching our socials and checking our This Week in Wrestling History, uh, yeah. usually the two weeks before WrestleMania, we'll be having things like Stone Cold doing a beer bash. We'll, <laughs> you're going to have like a, you know, intense showdown between Triple H and Shawn Michaels or yeah. Undertaker. Yeah. This year... We got Baron Corbin in the main event. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that. I feel like they just randomly pick somebody. Okay, who is big size? Who has some kind of name that people just hate? Like, you know, it built in heat. Okay, just stick him with Bobby Lashley. He's just going to be there to like I'm 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 pretty sure it'll be Baron Corbin versus Drew McIntyre on Raw and Drew Mc- next week, and then Drew McIntyre will beat him up, and that's mm-hmm. it. That's all that, that it's just to give him a match for Raw next week. Yeah, I, I was really curious like about the decision to have Baron Corbin be part of the end, right? Mm. And then I kind of did a little digging, I did a little digging and find out, you know, on their socials, what is it all about? See whether they try can explain themselves out of the situation. Yep. Very interestingly, Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley put up a post uh-huh. about two years ago, there was this image of Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre being part of one whole stable. Oh. Do you remember this? No, not really. <laughs> Because it was a really forgettable, very <laughs> three-week alliance, right? Right, most, right, la. right, right. Yeah, right. But, this, yeah, but so this, this was during the time when Baron Corbin was like the main guy feeding with Roman Reigns. Okay, actually, you know what? I take that back. I do remember this. And I didn't hate that alliance. It was a pretty badass alliance, if you think about it. Maybe, yeah, you're right. They are revisiting this. Yeah, so, uh, and it seems like that's what they did on the caption. They're saying like, you know, uh, you know, the three of us, you know, we were dogs of war, we were hunting mm-hmm. and, and we did blah, blah, blah. And then you decided to trade all away for adulation of the fans. Basically, they're shitting on Drew McIntyre. Ah. So that's how they try to, you know, bring it back and pull some sort of narrative thread through this angle. But here's my issue with that. Mm-hmm. Why sacrifice hurt business for this payoff. Well, as much as we love the Hurt Business, let's face it, the only two members of Hurt Business that are relevant are Mm -hmm. MVP and Bobby Lashley. Really, really, Cedric Alexander, as much as he's trying, as great as Shelton Benjamin is in the ring, what have they brought to the table? Absolutely nothing. And I, like, when I watch them as a unit, I'm like, okay, this makes sense. I would rather them beat up, get rid of Cedric and Shelton Benjamin and bring mm-hmm. in other people to form a new Hurt Business. Why not give um, Baron Corbin the rub if they can really pull this off? It's like, you know, like the different variations of DX. Like, yeah. you have members coming in, going out, but you always have one or two key members. Well, obviously, Bobby Lashley and MVP are the key members. So why not bring a mid-card guy like Baron Corbin in? So you know, this is my defense of the breakup. You know, you know what this reminds me of? Mm. When uh, Farouk kicked out like Mark Henry, right? Yeah, and then yeah. he brought in Owen Hart. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like, I, I know that one seems super random as well, but I think okay, they had random. more for Mark Henry. The whole point of 
any stable is to elevate one person or maybe two. In this case, they elevated Bobby Lashley and that was it. The other two, useless, go away. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I know. It's such a shame because I, I was hoping like the route that they get mm. will make Cedric Alexander a star in the mid card. Will make Shelton Benjamin, <laughs> Bro. you know, going forward. Cedric, Al- Cedric Alexander is a star on 205 Live, okay? Bro, bro. <laughs> Shelton Benjamin <laughs> will be in the main event. The show, main event. Okay? Oh my god. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, this coming from a guy who loves these two in-ring competitors, okay? Don't get me wrong. I don't think they are poor at wrestling or putting on a show. It's just that they literally have no character now. L- literally, after this, this is going to be the high peak point of Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. After this, you're going to fall into obscurity. We know that. That's, <sighs> that's what's going to happen. So, I'm sad for them because yeah. the Hurt Business kept them relevant. Mm-hmm. The even though the Hurt Business was good for Bobby Lashley, in, yep. in terms of representation, it makes him look cool. Wow, he got this posse and all that. But I know that if if Hurt Business ends, right, Bobby Lashley is going to be fine. He got MVP. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the two of them, bro, very poor thing. <laughs> yeah, they're they not going to be remain a tag team. I don't think they're just going to just slide straight down the card. Let me give a few shout-outs. Uh, Tovakin, Referee Ryan, uh, yo. Irvin. Yo, what's up, y'all? Thank you so much for jumping in onto the live chat. Good to see you all. Um, so, yeah, is the breakup, quote-unquote breakup. Actually, technically, he just kicked out two members. They didn't officially say oh the hurt business is over he said the hurt mm. business is over for the two of you so mm. does it mean that they can continue with the hurt business but with baron corbin and do you see this as a thumbs up or thumbs down let us know in the chat right now hurt business no more cedric alexander no more shelton benjamin thumbs up or thumbs down i actually say kind of thumbs 45 degrees up i, w- I want to see where this goes and honestly now that this has developed like this i kind of want to see Lashley hold on to the title and move on to dominate with this ridiculous stable that he mm. seems to be building. Seeing as Bobby Lashley is the CEO of the Hurt Business, maybe this is just a company restructuring uh, right now. Oh. They're firing the people. They want to hire new talent. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. You know what, I, you know what I'm thinking? Mm. Okay, uh, hear, hear me out, okay? Because I know that uh, this is going to be a very random, radical idea. You know who I want to join the Hurt Business? Who? 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 Up. Oh, yeah, hey, after the draft, why not? And Byron Corbin is a SmackDown guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. So, so yeah. I don't know whether it's uh, Hurt Business expanding to SmackDown. They got two divisions mm. of the Hurt Business. Or, or like, uh, if Apollo doesn't go to Raw, they, hi- they hire a Raw uh, personnel. Who do you think should be in the Hurt Business? Um, somebody who has potential. Matt Riddle. No? <laughs> Speaking of Matt Riddle, we need to talk about his botch. Okay, oh, we, suppose we ha- it, yeah, we botch. gotta talk about that in a bit. Um, but, but uh, before that... Hang on though, Irvin does bring up a very good point right now. What's up? Because the Hurt Business is barred from ringside at mm. the main event. What if this is a trick? What if kicking Cedric and Shelton out of the Hurt Business means they can interfere? In the main event. Ooh. Hey, that is a very, very smart theory. Yes. Shout out to you, Irvin. Yes. And yes. That, that is a swerve that I'm talking about. I'm saying like, what if this is just a swerve? Yeah. Lah. So they will come in. They will, but then, but that means Drew doesn't get his big main event moment. Which... And I think it works because if Drew McIntyre doesn't win, this will be a good reason to like get him out of it while yep. still ke- keeping his momentum, keeping him strong. Yep. He got overpowered by the Hurt Business. Bobby Lashley remains dominant. Mm. And the soap at the end is like, uh, well, it's not on the level of Vince McMahon and Austin yeah. <laughs> coming together. But yep. it's like, imagine at the end of the match, uh, Drew McIntyre has Bobby Lashley on the ropes. He's mm. going to do the claymore, did the claymore, blah, blah, blah. Referee is down. Then all of a sudden... Shelton Benjamin come in, Cedric Alexander come in, and then they tease that they're gonna hit Bobby Lashley but, to the chest. Yeah, but then they pow, they kena Drew McIntyre, and he's the one that goes down. Yeah, and then they, good, ex- right? they explain it on Raw and everything. It does sound good. You know what the problem is? What it's Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Like it's not a big name coming out. You know, what I, I mean, it's like it's a bit like uh, okay, lame, whatever. Okay, here is my suggestion. This is how I would book a new mm. member joining in her business. Okay. I got two personal choices that I want. That Go, I want for to pitch. Go for all it. Go for it. Okay, first of all, this is based on true, uh, a, a legit quote that uh, Bobby Lashley and MVP put out. They have mentioned in interviews that they, they do want to eventually get a female member of mm. Hurt Business. Okay. Okay. So I would say that there's going to be a female member that's going to join. 
And I also think that there's one person that's going to join her business that is going to be very, very unexpected because yeah. he's technically a, a face. Okay. But since he's been out and he's been on the download for a while, oh. I think it would be a great way for him to make his return out of nowhere. Uh, are you talking about the guy whom, whose glory we are supposed to bask in? Yes. Bask in his be- glory. And, and going on that train of thought, right? This eventually can lead up to horse versus horse. Keith Lee versus Bobby Lashley, and it would just push Keith Lee to the moon, lah. Yeah, and, and and we have to admit, like Keith Lee hasn't has been kind of floundering in the main event. I think mm-hmm. it would be a great way to reintroduce him yep. and eventually get his face turned over. Yeah. Do you think they should add? Okay, this is a weird comment, but do you think they should add white people? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like all, I mean, like well, oh, the nation had Owen Hart, so it's not I mean, about a black or a, a color race thing. It's so just basically at this point, at this point in time, I think Baron Corbin is a token white person in her business, lah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not opposed to it, but I think it, it has to reflect the mentality of the hurt business, you know. Yeah, if like, he's gonna be all dressed up and gonna yeah. be all taking care of business, but uh, like I said about the the female talent, yeah. you know who I think should join? Who? Someone who's floundering as well. Uh, average ninety five actually mentioned. How about adding Naomi into the hurt business? Please, you are thinking what I'm thinking. Pull Naomi away from this Lana bullshit and let her be a badass. Yes, I think Naomi is due a gimmick change so hard. Like she really, yeah. really needs it. I think I think feel the glow was so 2017. Of course, yeah, so. yeah, and then now she's glowing even more with Lana, and then it's just it's just not working. It's not working. You, you know what would be awesome? What you know? You know how to tie in some long term storytelling? What? Bobby Lashley personally goes <laughs> back to Lana and then he make it seem like, oh, he's going to get Lana. Oh, oh, you know what? I feel I want to rekindle this. Oh, actually, no, not you. Bah, push, him to, push it to the side. Then get Naomi. Naomi. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yes. This is this. Vince Russo approved. Chop yeah, plus man. stamp. Hey, Irvin has a great idea for another fellow to join. Who? Alistair Black. Oh. And he's also black. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it fits and it also fits what with... what has Alistair Black been doing seriously like they've completely had nothing to do with him what's going on He did he piss somebody off did he like cut in front of a line um, uh, one of the writers or something like what? why do they hate him so much okay first of all from what I understand he was drafted to Smackdown that's the last we heard of him yeah yeah after he got drafted never once appeared on TV. Nope. And that happened a few weeks after his wife got released. Mm. So, what, so is I do not know where this is punishment. I do not know. Yeah, it's like uh, Triple H getting punished for the Montreal... Uh, no, not Montreal. The... Uh, what was it? Um, the Curtain Call. Curtain Call. Yeah, curtain call, yeah. Yes. But then at least Triple H still had matches. He just lost all his matches. I I would really push for Alistair Black to go back to NXT, man. He oh. needs to get back some of his... Shine. Actually, to be fair, to be fair, that's a really good idea. Like, all jokes aside, Alistair Black as part of the Hurt Business, it fits because he hurts people. He's like this no-nonsense badass guy. You know, he will sound he will sound good as like, in terms of the hierarchy of Hurt Business, Yeah, he could be like their enforcer yeah. or like the guy that takes out the people in, you know, just with the one swift kick. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. Uh, Dave Royalty says he's still injured, just started training. Okay, okay, so maybe that's why he's been gone. Mm, okay, okay. I mean, fair enough. Mm. Uh, but like I said, la, if Alistair Black, Black comes back, <laughs> if he comes back... Say that five times fast, bro. Black is back, Black is back. Black is back, Black is back, Black is back. Okay. But if he were to come back, I really hope that uh, we forget the abomination of his new theme song, which, oh. I, don't even, which I don't even remember oh, because it's no. not that memorable. No, no. but isn't his old theme song the super epic... Isn't yeah. that... Like uh, owned by the guy who left. That's why Keith Lee's music also they had to change. Yes, apparently that's the case. Uh, I oh. forgot what's the name of that duo. Yeah, the uh, producers. Uh, uh, pay them lah. Shit, pay them. Fuck. You know. Okay. The thing about all this ownership and copyrights. Me, me, me being someone who dabbles in music and do all that, right? Mm. To pay someone to use is like. Every time he has an entrance, must pay them. Oh, it's yalla. fucking expensive. It's like perpetuity. You're paying a passive income to the mm. band. See, okay, they would do it for someone like the Undertaker. Remember, rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah, of course it would. Yeah, but not someone on the level of Alistair Black. Like we love Alistair Black, but 
WWE yeah. in the pecking order, he's not very high. So what are you going to do? Uh, Irvin says, Alistair Black back in NXT as part of Tian Sha. Hey, why? This, this is another one. Tian Sha is all Chinese people. You cannot put one Ang Mo fella for no reason. He's the token white guy, bro. He's like Moto Combat. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, I mean, he would be better than... Uh, what's his face, anyway? Uh, uh, the, Boa. the Chinese guy, right? Boa. Boa. Who hasn't been in the ring for a long time. Thank goodness. Thank goodness, yes. Oh, we have no that, idea what he's capable of. That one cannot make it. Uh. Oh, Div Royalty says Alistair Black versus Karrion Cross. You know, that would be a great way to put Karrion Cross over. Yeah. Um, actually, I really like some of the veterans in NXT staying back in NXT because mm. you know how, like, for example, Johnny, Johnny Gorgano yep. and a Ciampa, like, they, they should have been on the main roster. If you follow the timeline, they would have been on the main roster like two years ago. Yeah. But it's great that they, that they stayed and it's like they are kind of building the new talent. So there's like mm. almost like a veteran level in NXT, which there, there wasn't. Yep, yep. Uh, unless you count Cassius Ono, la, but who gives a Wala. shit? Where, where is he? Uh? Didn't he go to NXT UK? Is he still he, in the UK? What's going on? So he's in NXT UK as like a as like a part-time wrestler slash backstage guy. Ah, over there. okay. Uh, yeah. Tovakin says it's CFO dollar sign. Yes, that w- mm. they were the producers of those really epic NXT tunes. Yeah, um, okay. yeah. Before we go back to NXT though, okay, anything else on Raw? Because I want to talk about Karrion Cross. He's going to be main event, obviously. Uh, anything else on Raw? I just remember, okay, just a few things off the top of my head. New Day have become very irritating. I want almost to like dismantle them. I really do. Like, for whatever reason, without Big E, they just seem like two very irritating... I, or, or have their gimmick run its course. Because, I don't know, I find Kofi quite irritating these days. Okay, the, the problem with maybe Monday, right? Maybe it kind of put a spotlight on that. Irritatingness got triggered a bit more. You know why? Why? For Monday Night Raw, there were so many segments with games. Oh, right. So, and I don't get it like that. Okay, there was the the, the game segment with uh, Sherrods, with uh, <laughs> New, New Day. That was so, like, hokey. Like, I'm sorry, but it's obviously staged. Yeah, and it just looks really, really bad. I, I mean, the point, if they're trying to put this dissension that, oh, AJ Styles doesn't really know almost or Omar's really really well yeah like there's so many other cooler funnier ways that they can do it like this is just makes AJ look like a stupid idiot yeah no but then they see that's the thing that's what I thought right like oh there's no connection between the two but then almost just destroyed New Day like if they had it at the end where almost and AJ were like hey why like this hey, hey, you know then okay mm. I get the storyline I get where they're going with that mm-hmm. but no they turned it into almost getting pissed off and destroying everything so it's like no. uh there was the no f- dissension to be seen after that. The, they just the f- sucked the their rates. Yeah, the fact that Omos did that halfway through the game, like, why can't he just do it? Like, you know what? I don't want to play this stupid game. I'm just going to beat you up right now. Like, yeah. you have saved the segment so much. Yeah, that, uh, it, I think in their minds, it was like, okay, this is something funny and cute. I really do feel like the New Day, as much as I hate to say it, they've run their course. They are starting to go into heel there, like, go away, irritating, like, <laughs> ex heat, uh. X-Pac yeah, it. yeah. Like you know how remember X Pac was like face for a long time. Then he started getting super irritating. Mm, go away, hit lah. <laughs> yeah, and I hate to say that about someone like Kofi Kingston, who deserves the championship run, right? But I like, like, oh, what? Something is off here. It's too much. Like. The problem is, right, once he had that WWE Championship run, he should have built on it. Like, yeah. okay, even if he lost it, like, if he were to, you know, maybe pursue other titles while still being tag team champions, it's okay. Mm. But if you realise, after he lost to Brock Lesnar, they, they, he never even <laughs> once mentioned, he never even once acknowledged that he lost the title. He never asked for rematch, nothing. The it's... only thing he had was, like, that one-off encounter with Brock yeah. in the Royal Rumble. And after that, back Gone. to mid-card. It's like Jinder Mahal. Uh. They just gave him the title for... Uh... Uh, a cup of coffee, essentially. Yeah, but, and, it's, oh. but it's very sad. Yeah. By the way, um, our good, f- we we just talked about him. Oh my god, the NXT UK guy. Uh, Cassius Ono. Yeah, Cassius Ono. He was released during the COVID. Oh, was he? Somebody brought that up in chat. There you go. Thank you for the Google or either that or you guys probably know this in your head. Nice. You guys are like our mod slash uh, search engine really. Yes, so, okay. yeah. well, we are keeping the show live. You guys can like do all your research and share it with us. Uh, Irvin says, Sami Zayn and New Day annoying in the same way. You know what? The funny thing is I don't find Sami Zayn annoying in that way. Leh. I find him like he's irritating but not to the like, oh my God, I want to boo him. I actually still like him. So I don't know. <laughs> The thing about Sami Zayn that is going for him is, to me, like this conspiracy thing, mm. he is so committed to the character that 
you almost want to believe that the payoff is that he's going to find out there's some conspiracy. Well, I mean, the whole Logan Paul, like what? So they are really paying Logan Paul to show up at WrestleMania? Is that it? Uh, he's supposed to show up this Smackdown. week on SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very curious because I haven't seen any sort of promotion on Logan Paul's side. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a ruse. Yeah, it could be April Fool's joke, huh? Yeah, um, okay, be, there, there's more with Braun Strowman and Shane, but who gives a shit? That's just the yeah. worst. So an- another stupid game. Stu- another stu- stu- stupid, stupid segment. Um, uh, Miz and Morrison. Hey, hey, hop, hop. Oh my god. Okay, first of all, I love Jomo. I Jomo love has it. a Jomo has a very fresh outfit that he yes. wore on Raw. I gotta admit. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> look, man, like, I I don't know why people don't give these two enough credit. That is some funny shit. You know what? You know what's the best part about the song? What? They actually had a reggaeton beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's to cut out the fellow at the Bugs Bunny. Yeah, um, la, bad the, Bunny. Bad Bunny. Um, I mean, obviously, they can't sing for nuts, yeah, but yeah. they are entertaining as hell. So. Dude, I loved it. I loved it so much. Yeah, they are super... Like, they, to me, are heels verging on being faces because they're funny. Whereas mm. the New Day are now going the other way. They're funny, but not really. And they're starting to go heel for me. The, okay, to me, the what made New Day work um, was their humor at that point in time. They... Like the the humor the humor landed because some of the things that they said were in trend then. Yes, yes. So like uh, at that point in time, remember they were they made some Pokemon Go joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So a couple of things that they did like very pop culture stuff. It felt mm. cool, but I think I don't know why. Like maybe because we know like Xavier Woods is really kind of has some sort of um sponsor, right? He got endorsed yeah. recently. Yeah. Uh, so he's doing his own thing. So like it almost feels like it's very corporate, really. Mm. Or maybe he's just not putting as much effort in. You know, and I don't think Kofi has that sort of like in tune vibe mm. as well. So he's just, you know, throwing out baby and whatever. Like that shit is not landing at all. None you, of it is landing. You know how you can tell whether somebody is, uh, which wrestler is very invested in their wrestling career? How? You go see their Instagram page where they oh. promote more. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I see, I see. Because Xavier was very obvious. Austin Creed, his IG page, he's literally what he put as his title is he's a gamer oh okay yeah well i mean yeah there you go that makes sense and i mean to wwe's credit too it's like okay they see it there's a huge market in gaming right so let let him go with it like he's the gaming champion of the wwe yeah get in those eyeballs is it to the detriment of his wrestling career because he hasn't won a singles title Hmm. you know uh he's he has been exclusively a new day slash tag team guy even though we all know he can wrestle his wrestling is great Mm mm-hmm uh, okay, uh, let's move on then. Randy Orton. Uh, okay, I think this is just... I mean, the groundwork has been laid. Like, there's not much else they need to do. Randy versus Bray Wyatt. WrestleMania. Yeah. Let's go. So, so the question is, should Bray have one more appearance before WrestleMania as himself? Uh-huh. Like, well, not, not, not crazy, but not burn like, charcoal. He has to be Salta Fiend all the way. The... I in my mind the Uncle Rogers, Mr. Mm-hmm. Rogers, I mean, Bray Wyatt is dead for now. He's not gonna mm-hmm. because he's he's still he's Tauta. He's Tauta Finn. It's almost a uh, bro. It's mm. as if Alexis Bliss Alexa Bliss has become the Mr. Rogers part of his character. Yes. Explaining things for him. Mm-hmm. And he's just the guy that's sitting on the swing being weird. Yeah, like, he's the demon, <laughs> like he just shows up and whatever. So um, I yeah, I have nothing bad to say about this as so long okay. as I get to see more Alexa Bliss. Oh man, Alexa Bliss threading on top of Randy Orton. Oh, you're making uh, Mrs. Okay. Orton all uh, upset and everything. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Wait. Last thing though, do you think because they haven't hinted it at all so far, is it gonna be a normal match or is it gonna be a Firefly Funhouse Part Two? Oh. Hmm. I, I hope it's a, a cinematic match. To be honest, I really it do. It should be. It should it, be. A it, it should really match. be. It's just as long as they don't. Do a re-thread of their House of Horrors match again already. Here's what I think, because there's going to be a live crowd, right? Yeah. I, I believe it's going to be... Uh, half and half? Like a, it's a half and half, yeah. No! Like a- that was what the House of Horrors match was! <laughs> but but hopefully it's something that is like a bit palatable. La. So they start mm. off in the ring, they fight fight through the crowd, then they go backstage, then boom, they end up some sort of like alternate dimension shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and coming out. <laughs> could be, could be. And then got wardrobe change and everything. Look, it's up to them to be creative about it and uh, we'll just see where this goes. But Randy has to go down, you know? Like, 
how many times has it been that the Fiend has or Bray Wyatt has lost to Randy Orton at WrestleMania already? Yeah, people keep forgetting that actually Randy is the heel in this whole situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but like they've been doing such good work, especially Randy Orton in mm-hmm. recent months. It's like okay lah, you know. He's been carrying the feud almost by himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, everyone agrees that Firefly Funhouse Two would be great. Uh, mm-hmm. Hey, what's up? Jason from Brunei, who says, please, Sina, make an appearance in the fun house. <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah. Jason, you brought up a very good point. You know what would be super cool if they were to have like a match in the fun house itself? Mm-hmm. And then like Randy is like looking around, looking for the fiend, and then he turns around, suddenly, boom! There's like a frozen figure, John or Cena. like a wax figure, or John Cena, like, oh! It's like he's stuck in purgatory in yeah. the fun yeah. house. Actually, that would be, oh my god, hey, can you please send them this clip right now? <laughs> send oh WWE god, yeah. this clip so they, they are, oh, this is a good idea, let's do it. Oh, one more thing. Well, you know what happens? If he were to like go down a weird dark hallway, mm. he opens a door and then John Cena doesn't do anything. He just looks at him. He's like... Oh, you can't see me. There's nobody there. Or he pretends <laughs> like there is nobody there, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, one more. Cool. Okay, one more thing to talk about on Raw. Rhea Ripley and Asuka, they signed their contract and then they, they are going to tag together on Raw. They'll probably like fight each other again. Um, um, very short build-up for this one. Doing Asuka the, dirty, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's, it is. Um, Rhea Ripley is interesting because, she, you know, you look at her, you know, she's a star. Yeah, yeah. She's a badass. Mm. Um, I wish that in the in the build up to this, they can have her do some a few squash matches. Yep. I think that would be really great so that people who, we have to assume that some people have never watched NXT mm-hmm. and have is seeing her for the first time. I think it would be a great way to just establish a dominance. Like she just beats up like maybe two on one. Just, yep. Or destroys Peyton Royce. I'm sorry, Peyton Royce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after her amazing promo, but destroys her and all that. And then, like, hey, then you can see why she's a threat. I'm there for the uh, um, Peyton Royce entrance. That's about it. Mm. Everything after that, yeah, squash. Um, okay, so let's move on very quickly. Recap. Uh, anything good stand out for you on AEW Dynamite? Okay, uh, let's move on then. Nothing was good. Um, I'm <laughs> wait, kidding. Wait, 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 I'm kidding. You didn't, you didn't mention anything to do with Riddle. Oh, we, shit, yes. We, we gotta talk about Riddle, though. No? Um, uh, it's okay. Never. What, what did he say? He, I forgot. Okay. He had a psycho seat moment, basically. He well, basically flopped his line live yeah, on TV. Uh, in front of Asuka, and then he was like, what was that? What's going on? Uh, never mind, and then walks away, right? He's like, he, oh, no, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. That he Wait, hold on, but, but here's the thing, though. Do you think they did that on purpose? I feel like Riddle's character lends itself towards moments like these. Like, he's supposed to be this weird himbo in his own world, possibly high dude, right? Like, the fact that he forgot what he was about to say, I feel like maybe they did that on purpose. Maybe they're trying to go for a viral moment. I I, I don't know whether it's on purpose, but bro, he literally looked at the camera. He was like, man, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. And he just walked out. Like And and like, the thing that saved the segment, because I watched it live. Yeah, yeah. I watched it live. You literally saw Asuka look at the camera also I- like, Shit, did he just do that? Flop on me. Yeah. And then Asuka just said some Japanese words just to like cover it up. Yeah, so yeah. I guess it was a nice save, but I tell you, bro, it was a wrap up. <laughs> it was super roused, but the thing is, I feel I feel like they did it on purpose. It I, I really believe that they did it on purpose. It fits with this character. They're trying to go for this viral moment. And mm-hmm. if, if more than anything, it's more talked about than anything else he's done recently. <laughs> Okay, maybe we can ask the chat. Like, if, do you guys know whether this was a legit thing? This just happened? You know, was there anything dirt sheets that, you know, uh, like, For- investigated into this? Forget about the dirt sheets, whether they will get into it or not. It's like, Irvin says, on purpose, we are talking about this now. So, if it's not on purpose, well, we are talking about it. If you're on some mm-hmm. purpose, we're talking about it. So, whatever it is, it is a win. And I actually think mm-hmm. that it fits his character perfectly. So, so it's basically controversy creates cash regardless. Yeah, well, I don't know about controversy, but at the end of the day, it fits his character to a T of him just like wandering around in his own little world. And then he's like, huh, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and then yeah, but <laughs> walks I, I, away. I, 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 won't, I won't blame the WWE, but there's a precedent for this, you know? For the longest time, I thought there was this one segment, I thought it was completely... Uh, authentic, like it happened randomly. Mm-hmm. And then I found out years later, there was actually scripted by WWE. Which one? Uh, remember this one scene in like 2006, 2007, Batista was like warming up backstage. Yes. And then there was a fan running in. Yeah. Like right before they throw the commercial. And then he did the, the Batista pose. <laughs> yeah, he did and the then thing. run and off. And then he got chased by the security guards. And then like the way Batista look at it, like what the fuck. And then uh, JR literally say, well, we are live, folks. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then, yeah that was scripted. Was yeah. So... 
like I said, I think they are once in a while they want they will sneak in some of these moments to make it make us viewers be like, was that real? Was that supposed to happen? And I mm. think that was one of those moments. Rare, very rare. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, but you know what? <laughs> Riddle, <laughs> Riddle, Riddle is a, a quiet taste. Uh. Let's just put yeah. it that way. Well, here's the thing. Remember, I was talking about how I can't stand Riddle's new character mm. because of this botch. I was like, okay, like he, he's he's quite funny, lah. You know, uh, so I'm like, he's actually won me over with this intentional or unintentional uh, botch. We'll see in the next few weeks. Like Tovakin mentioned, if that was real, he will probably get into trouble for it, and he wouldn't be on the mic. If he were to bring it up mm. and make it a running joke and start walking off the set yeah, yeah. <laughs> during segments, then you know that he's there running with it. Oh, oh, the shadow says that was planned and he'll send me a link later. So, ah, yeah. Nice. Like, I think most people believe that to be a planned segment. And like I said, funny. It was funny to me. <laughs> I loved it. Everyone's... And, okay, what is Riddle doing having an interaction with Asuka that kind of doesn't make sense like they mm-hmm. have no connection but if you think about it Asuka's reactions and she can speak in Japanese so we don't know what the hell she's saying yep. it actually is a perfect combination if it were like one of the interviewers they're like huh like it wouldn't yeah, have yeah. worked the fact that it was Asuka and her reaction to him flubbing his lines was perfect you know what made the attitude era so great like when everyone had such a distinct character mm. and then you have someone randomly from like the main event interact with someone from the lower cut yes. it's still very entertaining because their lower cut people their character is still very very strong yeah 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 so like if this is like it's reminiscent of when remember there was this one time uh the rock went to the apa's backstage bar or mm. uh, and then he he would walk past the door and then yeah, yeah, yeah. jbl and, <laughs> go through uh, the door not yeah, go through the damn door, go through the They never acknowledged him. And once he went through the door, he's like, hey, what's yeah, up, bro? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I I like it when, like, in Raw or in the main shows, everyone has such a distinct character. It doesn't matter whether they don't have a storyline, mm-hmm. but just their interaction is interesting because their character is so strong. There you go. Tovakin says, turn him into the next Perry Saturn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he could, mop. Instead of a mop, he got the skate scooter. Lah. All right, let's move on to AEW Dynamite. Uh, a few yes. things stood out to me. In uh, Inner Circle are back. I mean, yeah. Yeah, in a circle. Did you enjoy the brutal beatdown of the pinnacle? Uh, yeah, I, I did. Uh, but I did laugh at one part. <laughs> uh, I, I love when uh, all of a sudden, right? Uh, I think, was it one of the FTR guys, the Botak guy? Mm. He started bleeding like he kind of <laughs> fucking uh, beat assaulted. up by a like, baseball bat or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that e- escalated very quickly. Like, yeah, whoa. Yeah, like, li- like, literally, like, where did that come from? Like, all of a sudden... Because because like the camera was like very chaotic, following everyone around yeah, yeah. differently and all that. Um, it this seems like it's gonna lead to Stadium Stampede too. Yes, yes. Seems like it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I like that. Um, Inner Circle has shown a vicious side to them. Mm. Because before this, it was like uh comedy. There was a lot of like distrust. When Inner Circle is back together and like they are strong as a unit in like yep. its original form, they they actually. Uh, they, you you see why they are so you know like um, badass and it, they have been so powerful in the last two years right. of AEW. And the funny thing is, it, it almost seems like the Pinnacle are sort of the Jokers now, because that whole segment of them trying to choose like you know the the the, the color of their locker room, the oh, yeah, furniture yeah, yeah. and all that shit. It was a bit like okay la, this is quite douchey and funny at the same time. Did you, did you realize that they kind of they're definitely channeling four horsemen with this? Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So the um, so inner circle seems to be more of a hybrid or like its own thing. Like I've never been able to put inner circle in like a comparison with mm-hmm. previous factions, which is good. Which is good. Like it's it's really its own thing because like they they are they are so different in all their iterations. Yeah. Like you know that 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 I can't really place who they are, but it's so obvious that. Pinnacle is definitely a whole match to all the old affections of yeah, the 80s. I mean, they all like dress up with, you know, uh, expensive suits and it fits the characters of FTR and um, yeah. MJF. Uh, there was this one comment that made me chuckle though, uh, on YouTube. Someone said that, uh, wow, we are really supposed to believe that MJF is ordering all these grown ass men around. Yeah, yeah exactly, right? <laughs> wow. Still young boy. La. Yeah, he is a little bit. Huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, thoughts on Santana beating down Tully? I mean, it's gang warfare, bro. Yeah. Well, technique. I okay. They didn't really show it. Mm. Like the, the moment the camera followed them, like 
Tali was just sitting on the chair looking very tired. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was in my head, I was thinking like, okay, okay. They are literally just told Tali to sit down yeah, and yeah. They just act very, very like they got, just got beaten up and yeah, they yeah, focus yeah. on everyone else. So, of course. Yeah, I, you think what, what beating up elders are? Yeah, come on, man. It's quite vicious. Yeah. Um, the the part when MJF basically got his head toilet. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, no. Um. Yeah. I I'm actually really looking forward to what they have, you know, going forward. And it's a Chris Jericho segment, so I mean, it makes sense that this is working because it's Chris Jericho and his wisdom, right? Yeah. Um. Let's talk about the rest of the garbage. I mean, uh, stuff. <laughs> Nightmare Family. Uh, oh man. Uh, bro, bro. Who the fuck is QT Marshall, bro? Who, like, who, yeah, exactly. Who gives a shit about QT? Seriously, though. Seriously, think, yeah. they've been like bringing him in, like, oh, QT Marshall, friends, friends. Oh, yay, nepotism is a thing in AEW. I get it. I get yeah. it. And then now they're gonna push him into like a a proper feud. Like you know, he's broken off with the mm-hmm. Nightmare Family with a bunch of newbies who yeah. are supposed to be part of the like. Who are these people, bro? I, <laughs> okay, you know what. <laughs> it's been it's been tough. It's been very very tough for me to watch AEW recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I said for a few bright spots, like I usually certain segments I will tune out. Like it's yeah. very obvious certain which segments I will tune out for. Um, this... anything with Cody right now, I'm yeah. tuning out. No, I and... feel you know what it is to me. Cody, it feels like Cody thinks he's Triple H. Obviously, yeah. we've talked about and joked about that he's like the Triple H of like the 2000s, right? He thinks mm-hmm. he's at this very high level where he can elevate other people, which is. Mm-hmm commendable but i don't think these people he's trying to elevate are yeah. anywhere at any level to be elevated nor is he the main event guy that should be used to elevate you know what i mean it's like yeah it's just like okay like this is all like mid-card shit okay i i i'll give you the perfect analogy of uh cody Rhodes right now mm. he is acting like he's in the twilight of his career when he never even had like the main run of his career yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. As it, at least not on AEW. Like maybe mm. he had a lot of great runs before this in previous companies. Mm-hmm. But like we haven't seen him being established as like the top heel mm. or like the top face in AEW. He he's really the moment he came in, he started doing all this, like putting people over. Like he's 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 acting as if he's like in his Shawn Michaels second run yeah. of his career. Exactly. When he's he, never even reached that hype yeah yeah he, ne- he never had the main run like his mm. tnt title yes he he lasted a while he did the challenge and all that mm. but it wasn't uh like he there wasn't like a big rivalry that kind of like permeated through his it, run yep his best his, his best run in aw was his first year mm. like that, that was when he was in the top titles okay even though he was contending for the top titles but he was in segments that was very, very interesting and then, okay, there's that whole thing about where he cannot contend. Wait, wait was it? It's him, right? He cannot contend for the main yeah. AEW title. Correct. I'm, I'm sorry, lah, but that devalues the title. As if, like, you know what I mean? Like, he literally like has... He's bigger than the title. Yeah, yeah it seems very arrogant and, like, I'm I, I'm not for it. That's why I, I know, like, Average always jokes with me about, like, Cody Rhodes, right? But there's mm-hmm. a... I really, really cannot stand what he's doing right now. I, I couldn't care less. He has some of the worst segments. He's so full of himself. Like he's, like you said, like, oh, I'm the Shawn Michaels. I'm coming back to put over people. But you've never even hit that level yet. He needs to turn heel. He needs to turn he, heel he, and he have like a to... monster run. Yes. You know what? He, you know, he actually has the look to be like Giovanni from Pokemon. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the fucking suits. He just need to have like a meerkat or like, I forgot what's the, which Pokemon, the one that stands beside him. Meow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like a uh, cane. Like he he needs to be very self-aware of himself because he if he's not aware, then he's definitely a parody of mm. what he's trying to be. Yep. But if he's very self-aware and he plays it and like really pulls it up, <sighs> 100%, I think it will be great. Okay. But bro, what is frustrating about watching Cody and what he does, right, is the fact that he really does think that he is, you know, in that position. I don't think he's self-aware. Something that I uh, picked up on the trailer for Roads to the Top, <laughs> Cody and Brandy's new reality TV series, right? Uh, if you listen to the teaser and watch the promo, mm-hmm. there was this one very, very interesting quote that Brandy said that I think might explain everything. Okay. Uh, they, so there was this one part of the promo that they were talking about having a child and then Brandy said I do not know whether Cody is ready to have a kid because he's kind of like a kid himself mm, mm, mm. Uh, he's, so he's playing up his fantasy lah. 
you hit the nail right on the spot, right, bro? Like, mm. like I feel like that one quote kind of encapsulates Cody because I think Cody is a kid in a candy store and yeah. basically he's given the keys to the kingdom. Because Uncle Tony Khan has Alah. showered him with all the money. Alah. He, I mean, he already had the wrestling royalty from dust inside, you know. So he already got the oh wow, I'm there's more than one royal family in wrestling. Shut, really, shut up, stop it. He, he, okay, so he got an inflated sense of self-importance from there already. Yeah. And now he's given all this money kind of thing. You have to understand, uh, bro, when he got kicked off WWE, mm. um, he was an outsider looking in to join the Bullet Club. Right. Bullet Club was already a thing before Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cody tried to like, you know, politic his way, <laughs> be part of it. And then now, then he became a head of it yeah. and blah, blah, blah. blah. So he's always had a history of like latching on to things and then mm. like trying to create something. So now he's given a chance to be his own, you know, dynasty and all that. Uh, you, it's uh, as simple as the Dark Knight quote lah. You know, you either die a hero huh? or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Please, please. You talk as if he is a main character. He is a sub-character, a supporting character at best. <laughs> so that analogy to the Dark Knight doesn't work for me because he's not the Dark Knight. He's not a main event player. I, he, I, he, neck he, tattoo doesn't give you uh, a freaking main event push, okay? He is like a prince. Uh, he Prince of darkness. Lah. He's literally a prince of darkness in the sense that he's a villain. He's like the villain who is like the annoying that will complain to their father type of villain. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Um, let's see. Let me let me catch up with chat. Oh, referee Ryan has corrected us, by the way. With Giovanni, it's uh, Persian, not a mouth. I stand corrected. Persia, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, who exactly are the wrestling families in... Uh, a royal families in wrestling, of says. <laughs> wrestling Game of Thrones. What mm. would it be like? The Flares, the Rhodes, the, the McMahon's, McMahon's, the Samoan family, <laughs> and Wai. The, yeah, the, the entire dynasty over there, the Guerreros. Uh, actually, WWE put up a uh, a DVD on this oh, a few years, it? ten years ago, oh. I guess. Uh, there was okay. a time when I was collecting DVDs and I saw this uh, wrestling's greatest families. Hmm. So uh, you might want to check out on that. You'll find out more. Tovakin says, Cody being a part of the Bullet Club was the worst thing ever. You know what? I've never watched it, but I, I'm i pretty sure you're right. I'm pretty sure everything he touches is shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you know what? You know what, what I enjoy about listening to your rants? Like what? you will go from 1% to 1%, but it, it, it will be attacked with the same amount of venom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Young Bucks for Cody. a while, and it will be like... A lot of Cody Rhodes. And then so far, Omega, maybe here and there, but I tell you, you will get there soon enough. Okay, no, no. Omega, like what he's doing in the main events, I I enjoy him being a complete prick of a heel. And like, he's quite self-aware, I feel. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. It's the fact that I feel like Cody is not self-aware at all. Okay, I know why why um, Cody Rhodes is doing what he's doing though. He's mm-hmm. stuck in this weird um, PR purgatory. Like mm. he he's... Trying to be the ambassador for AEW, trying to like do all this like good PR and try to be like he he wants to come across as the face, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like the reason why John Cena was hated for so long because mm. John, John Cena, we know that he should turn heel. His character is so super stale, but yep. because he's so good for the PR, uh, and I feel like he doesn't know anyone else who can do the job that he's doing as an ambassador for AEW, and that's mm. why I think he's trying to keep himself in that okay weird pocket. That's great. That's fine. Don't get into a feud with Cutie Marshall and waste like yeah, yeah, 15 terrible. minutes, 20 minutes on an... What the fuck is an exhibition match? Okay. No, seriously, that was a huge waste of time. Like, they were going in for moves, but oh, I don't hit you hard with it. Or, like, I'm like, what, what are you doing? Okay, okay. Uh, Foreign is going to do some... Uh education of wrestling history okay um and i'm, I'm not I, i'm not this is in no way complimenting their entire field and angle i'm just saying this is what i found out okay okay because um me trying to understand like what goes on in cody rose head right oh hang so on I, hang on average what? 95 just said cody better than bret hart everyone please uh tell him he's a moron <laughs> please be- i know I, he's joking i know he's doing it as, as a troll but if we had more right, you'd get banned right now He's trying to trigger you, bro. He's trying to trigger me, bro. Why you do this? Why you do okay. this? Okay, let me give you my one minute monologue of wrestling history according to Cody Rhodes' mind. Go, like What go. he's trying to do. Go. Okay, in 1981, uh, this is how far back uh, my wrestling history goes. 1981, Bruno San Martino was obviously the veteran. Yeah. Uh, and he, he's, he was going to be retiring very, very soon. Mm-hmm. His protege at that point in time was Larry Zabisco. Okay. 
So Larry Zabisco, uh, they they make it sound like Larry Zabisco is like under uh, his shadow. Yeah. Uh, he's like mentoring and he always come across as this like good boy face like, okay, listen to my mentor. Mm. You know, I want to do my mentor prop, blah, blah, blah. But then after a while, people keep saying that, you know, you will never be as good as San Martino. Right. You know? And those whispers got to him and he said like, okay, you know what? I want to challenge you like a gentleman's exhibition match okay. to prove that as much as I respect him, I know that I'm good. I'm my own man. I want to step out of his shadows. Yeah. And San Martino being played currently by the role of Cody Rhodes mm-hmm. says that, you know what? You're my friend. I don't want to embarrass you, you know, but if this is really what you want, okay, la, I'll give it to you, but I'm not going to attack you. I'm not going to hurt you. You know, I'm just going to show, show me that, you know, you can be the best. La. Exhibition so, match. La. Yeah. Basically had an exhibition match. So um, this happened for a couple of times. Every single time, Larry Zabisco just lost. Hmm. Just by a bit, they lost. But the thing is, the because of the story, right, behind it, they were selling out everywhere they had this series of matches. Uh-huh. Okay, so hang like, on, they, hang on. Was Larry Zabisco himself, like, was he popular by then when they were doing this? Yes, he was. Um, ah. In a sense that he... <laughs> but he, he was always known as the right-hand man okay. of Bruno San Martino. So the payoff of this like one year or two years of like this exhibition gentleman matches where yep. they were selling out in all the arenas across the country and they mm. were almost uh, sh- like th- there was small hints of him turning hill, turning hill, turning hill. And then eventually, he actually broke Bruno San Martino's back. Ah. That was like the final payoff. Uh, uh, but apparently, Bruno San Martino, okay, in real life, he was really working with a very Back, back, back injury uh-huh. and he was looking to retire yeah. so this was his way of coming up with a retirement storyline angle that was legitimate and allowed him to retire and put over Larry Zabisco so Larry oh. Zabisco basically became a full-blown heel mm-hmm. because everyone heard it was like oh my god he, he was broke. so frustrated that he couldn't win that yeah. he fucking took out his mentor and then he became a badass heel okay so this is how I link back to this story with Cody Rhodes Cody Rhodes said in an interview that his current feud with QT Marshall is inspired by that storyline with Larry Zabisco and <sighs> Bruno San Martino. And he's trying to create QT Marshall into a star a la what uh, Bruno San Martino did. Okay. And I, I know what's the first thing you're going to say. Mm. Who the fuck does Cody Rhodes think that he's some sign of Bruno San Martino? <laughs> no, not only who the hell does Cody think he is, who the yes. hell do, does he think QT Marshall is? Most people don't know who QT Marshall is and I'm talking about most wrestling fans, okay? Yeah. It's not like you've built him up to be this legitimate mid-carder. He's literally, in my mind, up to now, a jobber. A lower, He's- not even lower mid card. It's like curtain jerk sort of a guy. You know he's not even I mean? a young up and coming guy. He's like already a veteran. He's like older guy training, helping to train people. Yeah. Know? So like, why is he all of a sudden getting this shine, getting this push, and in in such a like? Oh no! The fact that he brought that up is even worse. Like, okay, y'all were inspired by the feud. I get it. It's a great story, but y'all are pulling it off poorly, very yeah, so poorly. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to. He said, okay, when it comes to him wrestling, he's going to bring back all this old school storytelling, blah, blah, mm. blah. You want to rekindle all this kind of shit. But they're doing it the wrong people. Like yeah. you said, not the right personnel to do it. He's he, not the right guy to do it. He's doing it with his best friend. The whole idea of, remember when QT Marshall first came in? He was like, oh yeah, he's friends with the Young Bucks. He's friends with Cody. It's like, oh, you already established him as a... The, the, the friend. A, a friend. So I'm like, oh, okay, uh, nepotism. That's great. That's fine. And then yeah. now, like, he's like, What? Uh, okay, uh, the, the one time he did a friend angle which was really, really good. Are you okay, bro? <laughs> uh, average, average just said something that almost made me spit my water out. He says, bro, QT Marshall um, really looks like one of those uncles working at Courts asking me if I want to buy a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to buy a laptop? Huh? <laughs> oh my God, bro. Why, it's such a very specific... Accurate description, huh? Average. He's like oh a, my God, oh, yeah. Irvin says he's like a Barry Horowitz. Yes! Oh, Chat okay. is on fire today. Bro, that is such... Okay, guys, you guys are giving all these great references. Keep uh, it up, man. Keep uh, it up. Uh, average <laughs> says at least WWE mid-card has Angel Gaza. Okay? Yeah. Look, everyone... Like, even the WWE's mid-card, they have people that could fit this role perfectly and, yeah. you know, look like the role. But instead of AW, you have some middle-aged uncle who works at Courts. <laughs> the one time, bro, the one time that I thought a friend angle worked with Cody was his first one with Sean Spears. Mm, yes. like, I thought when Sean Spears came in, he had really, really great heat. 
coming yep. in. So, uh, I wow. mean... And look where he is now. Just randomly getting killed by the inner circle. I, th- I uh, guess he's going to move on to a feud with Sammy Guevara. It makes sense. Yeah. But like he's but, been so watered down by now, nobody gives a crap. Yeah. The, the, and the funny thing about... <laughs> Hold wait, on, wait. hold on, no. Tova Kin says the only similarity that QT has with Zabisco is his receding hairline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're awful, lah. You're salty AF today. I love it. I love it. Okay, wait, I, I like the community that we're building, our young. Yes. All very influenced by our team. <laughs> <laughs> it just, okay, lah. Look, um, all these jokes aside, it just doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't. Mm. Um, and here's the problem with this. We just spent like at least 10 minutes ranting on this one. Actually, it feels like 20 here. Yeah, Holy okay. shit. I'm also, so sorry, guys. We no, need no. to move on. Also, what is the gun club doing in this nightmare? Why aren't they, they, why aren't they their own thing? Like, Billy Gunn is a name, right? His mm-hmm. kid, it, for all intents and purposes, looks very athletic, you know, handsome boy. Shouldn't they yep. be doing their own thing? Why are they in the nightmare family? I have no idea, bro. Like, and Obvi- they, uh, Obviously, it's, this is this is next level nepotism. It's like my uncle is like my friend. Yeah. So I'm going to bring all my friends in into this part of this big organization. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Latino world order all over again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. Um, the Young Bucks, they're having an all elite soap opera drama with uh, what's his face? The Kenny Impact Omega. Guy. Kenny Omega, Don Callis. Yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but it's not. It's not Inner Circle versus Pinnacle. That's the best stuff right now. Um, I think the problem with Kenny Omega right now, there, there is no face stepping up to him in AEW. Mm-hmm. So after John Moxley kind of went down the cut a bit, doing his own thing with Eddie Kingston, there is like no one that he is basically challenging. So that's why he's going into this weird tag team feud yeah. with what, the Young Bucks. What, what about Christian Cage? He shows up, he has a great match with Frankie Kazarian, right? Like, mm-hmm. obviously, that's supposed to be where it's going, but is it going there, or are they just going to slow burn it? The, I think it's... They, I mean, eventually, this seems to be where it's going, but there wasn't any mention of it. There wasn't any, like, uh, hint by Christian. I thought at the end of the match, he was saying, you know what, I'm I'm, go- I'm going to state my claim. I want to go for the title, mm. but I'm going to earn all these wins first. Yeah. Uh, I, if they kept that narrative front and center, maybe it's more obvious, but I guess now it's a bit unclear. <sighs> Bro, I'm very worried for Christian. I'm very worried he signed on the dotted line and then he's promised some stuff and then he's not going to go anywhere. Do you want him to be in the main event against Kenny Omega based yeah. on his performance? Yeah. Yeah, I think he can give it one last run and then after that, okay, please rest your body. Yeah, he, he can still go. I, yep. I do have to admit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the match was really good. Uh, a bit slightly slower guy, but the thing I like about um, Christian is the way he wrestles in the ring is like a smart tactician kind of wrestler. He's not flashy overly flashy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um actually i really enjoy his style more than age to be honest mm. very very weird that i say but here's why because i was a big fan uh you know 10 years ago when he had that rivalry with randy orton right right and the thing that made those matches work was that randy is like a slow very plodding kind of wrestler right yeah yeah and for some reason christian really mesh well because he's very versatile as a wrestler. Mm, yes. So he know that, okay, with Randy, he's going to be very fast, very quick, a lot of drop kicks, a lot of like, you know, um, uh, a lot of planchas that he does, which is very out of his character, yep. but he's doing it because he's Randy Orton. Mm. And I really like, because he's a very cerebral wrestler mm. as opposed to age, because age is like more of like, okay, you all cater to my style. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. yeah. Yeah, so that, that's that's oh. how we describe the differences between them. Talking about age, huh? Going going a bit heel heelish. I feel like um, that's where they're going for WrestleMania. Seems it, like he's the full on heel uh, in this actually, uh, scenario. I, I I feel like he's a bit of a tweener. So now you have a full on heel in Roman Reigns. Roman. Mm. Edge is sort of like he's still a good guy, but he lost it. So he's yeah. I feel like he's towing the line. And Daniel Bryan, of course, face all the way lah. So, um, but yeah, sorry to bring it back to WWE, you know, but amongst all this shit, we had to talk about something good. Uh, <laughs> um, what the hell did Moxley do? He fought somebody. I, I forgot he, who he fought already even. Uh, okay, I know Moxley is now on his own because AD got injured. I don't yeah. know whether his broken foot is a real thing or is it like a storyline no, uh, thing? Apparently it's real. Know. It's a real thing. So he's, uh, un- this is unfortunate because I feel like them together, I was like, oh, all of a sudden I'm actually interested in them. Yeah, so it just got ended right before it could even begin. Yeah, yeah. So did the injury happen because of the attack or it just happened beforehand? Bro, and the attack was just an excuse. Bro, the ring exploded. What do you think? Alamak. <laughs> because of that. 
Thank you. Okay, got it, got it. I got it. Uh, um, yeah, there's a bunch of shit with Red Velvet and Jade Cargill. Okay, I, I get it. You know, uh, Cody uh, loves a certain type of girl. Uh. Br- okay, Britt Baker, to me, is the thing that I like in the women's division right now. Sure. Uh, so I, she- I wish there's more of her. Was she uh, even on AEW Dynamite this week? She wasn't, though. She wasn't. Yeah. Um, I, I'm referring to, like, last week's promo. Okay. So that, is, that was actually someone I was looking forward to, to seeing. Mm. Uh, and I guess the last thing that we can talk about is the main event. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Moxley had a squash match in Dark Elevation. Oh my god. The poor guy got relegated to freaking this <laughs> YouTube show. I saw it though. I think I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I ran through a bit of Elevation uh. Uh, this past week. Um, okay, like it's, yeah. to pop, it's to pop a view, right? It's to pop a quote-unquote rating to get people to watch. Oh my god, Moxley is on Dark Elevation. But it would be like The Rock having a match on Heat. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, even though I don't watch it and I know you don't watch it, mm-hmm. but AEW Dark and AEW Dark Elevation consistently gets half a million to a million views on YouTube every single week. It's free so content, bro. It's free wrestling content. It's a great idea. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I mean, okay. For example, like when NWA Power was showing right mm. weekly episodes, I was really hooked to that. Okay. Because like there was a a proper world inside that show. Yeah. But it's just a bunch of matches exhibition it doesn't mean shit but yeah but it, it relates to what's i mean it kind of relates to what's going on on air so i kind of get it like if i could watch heat or velocity on youtube for free i would yeah i mean it would totally have made sense right for mm. it to be on a youtube show now um in this current context for sure lah, but for me it's just too much uh, bro it's, <laughs> and there's a lot of unknown people so it's like the 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 appeal of watching it is yeah, not there. Not there. Huh? Okay, let's move on then. Yes, main event, Arcade Anarchy. Uh, we didn't get to see Miro uh, break out of this nerdy nonsense. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, it was, it's just a glorified street fight, but with arcade cabinets and random bullshit lah. Mm, indeed, indeed. Um, well, okay, I, I'm going to say a couple of positives first. Yeah. Okay, best friends, they seem to be really, really good with street fights. I really mm. enjoyed their parking lot uh, brawl from, I think, is it, is it against the Lucha Bros? Uh, Lucha I, Bros, right? Yes, yes. Because, yeah lah. Um, uh, yeah, you go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, they, they seem to work lah. Because best, okay, for me, and I, I don't really enjoy watching best friends wrestle. Yeah. But when it seems to be this kind of brawl kind of situation, it's, they seem more interesting. I do not mm. know why. Because uh, what's his face can't do it well. Um, Which member? The not jacked one. The other guy. Oh, uh, the other guy. Uh, <laughs> The one that looks like He's trying to be a two dollar version of Bradshaw. <laughs> he could be the fucking <laughs> two, rings on the head. Two dollar version. I like that. Two dollar version of Bradshaw. Chuck Taylor. Chuck Taylor. Chuck Taylor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Chuck Taylor does not have it. it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, very interesting. Um, apparently Orange Cassidy now comes up to the Pixies theme song. Oh. As his entrance. Okay. Okay. You know the song "Where Is My Mind." No, not really. I, I didn't pay where, where attention. Where is my mind? Na, 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 well, if you listen to 80s song, you will know who the Pixies are. Lah. Right, right, right. Yeah, but uh, I, that, it, it fits Orange Cassidy like how CM Punk's cut of personality fits oh. Orange, uh, CM Punk. So it, it's very interesting. So I kind of got like a, a refreshing of the character. Bro, uh, like when they come out for the entrances, usually like in WWE, I will stay for the entrances because it's like, it's exciting and like mm, something to watch. Thing. I don't know, AEW, whenever they do the entrances, I go take a shit or I pee or, or I do something <laughs> else. It's I'm, definitely to do with the presentation of like the whole set as a whole though. because you yeah, are yeah. so close to the ring. Mm. There's not much thing to do for an entrance anyway. True. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But for the, the match itself, uh, I really, really like the, uh, the, the appearance and the return of the two people that was involved in the match. Oh, uh, right. Uh, so, okay. First of all, uh, Tovakin says the real winner of Arcade Anarchy was Sue. <laughs> <laughs> the mom. The mom. Um, yes, the return of, first of all, popping out in the UFO machine, very fittingly. I, I think yeah. that's a cute Easter egg, lah. Uh, yeah, Statlander, yeah. the alien. Yeah, uh, Statlander and Penelope Cruz, I didn't know they were they had a thing or they were fighting. Penelope Ford, lah. Penelope Ford, Penelope Cruz. <laughs> the actress become wrestler all, huh? Yeah, sorry, I was thinking about some other girls. Well, Penel- Penelope Ford and Chris Statlander, I, I believe, so So I, I tried, did a bit of digging, then I realised that actually Penelope Ford was the thing that, was the person that injured Chris Statlander. Yes, yeah, so there is precedence to this, like, there is a point to this, so that was yeah. great. And then, yeah. of course, um, oh my god, what's that guy's name? Trent. Trent, yeah, but, uh, Trent Beretta or just Trent, I guess. 
is training in the AEW scene. Came in with his mom, and he so, looks great, by the way. Trent looks like a wrestler. Yes. Shredded. Yeah. AF. Uh, and the mom is very. You know what? The mom thing is really cute, lah, bro. I okay. Deny sure. That, la. Sure. Um. Okay. The match as a whole, I I, I think we've talked too much a little uh, a little bit too much already. We need to get to our NXT review. Yes, a preview. Mm. Uh, well, we'll finish it up by saying that uh, I'm. I think Biro is done with this whole thing, man. Yeah. I hope so. I I hope he moves on and I hope he becomes a killer heel. He needs to just like move on from this, like best man nonsense and like the thing is yeah. he left WWE like one shit gimmick to come in here and like you assume he's gonna be awesome and mm. like be a, this destroyer heel, yeah. but like this gimmick is not any better than what yeah, he but- did. WWE. But, uh, Miro has all the tools right now. Like he's yeah. the best he ever looked yeah. physically. Yeah. Shredded. Mm-hmm. He has his ring gear is great. He mm-hmm. looks like those kind of like street fighter. Hey. I thought gang gang gear gang gear gang gear. Gang gear. Gang gear. What? There's this one guy. Uh, I do not know. Uh, the the people in the chat will probably know. There's this one uh guy. He looks exactly like him in Street Fighter. Zangief. Zangief. Really? You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the Russian guy who does wrestling moves. Rusev, <laughs> there you go. Um, you know what? I want Rusev to be back in WWE as part of the Hurt Business. How about that? Oh, well, he will never go back to WWE. Though. Yeah, uh, yeah, he definitely needs to challenge for a title. Oh, okay. Oh my god, I don't want to bring up another AEW thing because we'll just go on a straight tangent. Yeah. But this whole Brian Cage Team Taz nonsense, I, I, it's so fake. I mean, not not that wrestling is real, real, but it. He, oh, never mind. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> Mr. Move on. Young. When like, Mr. Young is out of words, right? You know that he's just disappointed. He's not even angry anymore. He's just yeah, disappointed. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. All right, let's move on to WWE. Uh, <laughs> by the way, this year's Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal will take place on SmackDown. Not this week, but next week. Before oh, WrestleMania. Yeah, but on SmackDown. Huh? So That's how bad it's gone at, down. At least uh, Tozawa, Angel Gaza, Cedric Alexander, Drew Gulak. Il- Why does it say on the thing here? Eric Elias. Mm. Is that his real first name? Eric? It says, like, WWE.com announced the following participants. Cedric Alexander, Drew Gulak, Elias, comma, Eric. What? No. I've what? never heard of this. This what is my it? first time hearing of this. Okay, this must be a typo. What is this? Yeah. Okay, this anyway. So- uh, Grand Metal League, Humberto Carrillo, who apparently is still around. Jackson Riker, Jay Uso. Oh, no, Jay Uso. Poor thing. Jay Uso, is after in, his main event run. He's in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I hope he's on WrestleMania. He's probably going to be by R- Roman Reigns' yeah, side. Maybe, maybe. Kalisto, King ba- Baron Corbin. So mm. I guess he's not, not going to be at Lashley's side. Lindsay Dorado, huh, Mace, Murphy. Really? Oh, hold on, hold on. I think they forgot to hit a, like a enter. So Eric as in the Viking Warriors, Eric. I Oh, Eric. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I said because uh, it says here Mace, comma, Murphy. I'm like, what? No, it's Mace and Murphy. Mm, okay, that makes sense. That Mustafa makes sense. Ali. Poor guy. Yeah, uh, Ricochet, Shelton Benjamin, Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah Slapjack, Tiba, Tucker. Oh, Tucker is still around? He's alive? <laughs> Wait, if he's dead, then where's Otis? O- Otis busy hanging out with Chad Gable probably will be in a tag team match for they the. They probably get a match la. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, this is just the glorified participation battle royal la. <laughs> yeah. Let's just admit, just uh, see for what it is, right? Oh uh, yeah, right. Okay. Um, shit. So many things to cover before we actually get there. Um, R R V D Hall of Fame. Yes, no. Yes, of course. Yes, come okay, on. Okay, yeah. There you go. Uh, and uh, William Shatner as well for the celebrity uh, wing. You know what? This year's uh, this year's Hall of Fame is actually a pretty good. Uh, class. Very good, very good. Yeah. The the only thing, I, the only comment I would say is that it's so weird because I'm so used to like the Hall of Famers being people from the 80s, yeah. early 90s. Now we've moved to the ruthless aggression era. Bro, we old, bro. That's we that's what it is. Old, we old, man. Okay, you know what needs to happen though? RVD but, needs to show up on Raw and have an interaction with Riddle. Riddle. <laughs> and just bro. It, they both just stare at each other. What are we supposed to say? I don't know. Look at the like. They need some stoner moment. I would. I would actually cheer that yeah. shit. You know, I would pop if that happens in WrestleMania. Okay, this is oh, yeah, what yeah. I really hope. Yes. Like literally, Riddle with his scooter coming, coming at that bump into RBD. RBD. They, they just look at each other. He's like, bro. And he was like, bro. bro. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Bro. They just need that moment. Dude, it's perfect. Like, and in a way, it's RVD passing the torch over to Riddle as yeah, the resident yeah. stoner. 
It's perfect. Right? It's perfect. Okay, let's get to what we are supposed to talk about now. My God, it's been one like... One hour later. <laughs> yeah, one hour later, right? NXT stand and deliver. Here we go. Night one, okay? Which happens on Wednesday, which is our Thursday night. Thursday um, morning. Thursday morning, sorry. Yes. Uh, Kushida versus Pete Dunne. Oh, uh, Yes. Why? Uh? Why why are they fighting? I, I don't know why I missed this. Okay, well, Pete Dunne has been going around saying that he's like the best technical wrestler yep. in NXT, right? Mm. So I think it's more of like an open challenge kind of deal. Okay. Uh, and also, Kushida has been having a few interactions with... Um, I don't know what's the stable called. Mm. The Wait. Uh, Pete Dunne. No, no. Uh, uh, Pete Dunne? Oh. Pete Dunne and uh, Danny Burch and Ori Loken. Who uh, one of them is injured? That's why they had to vacate the tag titles as well. Correct, and then correct. McAfee is never around, so technically he got no stable lah. He's just yeah, by so himself I huh? I forgot what they call themselves, Kings or NXT or some shit. I don't know lah. Mm, mm. But Kushida has been having a few interrupt- interruptions with them, so um, maybe he answered the call saying that he's also a great technical wrestler. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a great match. Uh, I think yeah. Like that. yeah, it's one of those matches that like you don't really need a storyline. You know it's gonna be good. He's right? just gonna go. Yeah, let's go. Uh, Gondler eliminated for an opportunity at the NXT North American title on night two. Here we go. Swerve, Leon Ruff, Bronson Reed, Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis, LA Knight. Yes. Uh, well, obviously, this past week on NXT, LA Knight won the Battle Royal. Mm-hmm. So we there's definitely a, you know an argument for him being a favorite to yep. win. Mm-hmm. Not my personal favorite to win, though. Oh, who who is your personal favorite to win? Uh, wait, you tell me yours first. Uh, Dexter. Dexter, right? Yeah, it has to be what? I mean, they're, they're building this whole feud between The Way and Dexter Loomis. Yeah, um, so there's two ways he's going to go, which I feel is, after what happened on NXT, I feel very intrigued that if he goes this way, it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dexter will have been one of it. But imagine if Austin Theory won. Oh. And then they really did the finger poke of Doom. Right, no, but Austin <laughs> Theory is out, isn't he? He is, is he out? Yeah. Oh yeah, he was. He, he was, he was in eliminated six, already. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's bad, not. Yeah, yeah, Austin Theory is not in at all. Yeah, the, the I I thought the whole finger poke of Doom thing was funny when they yeah. did the backstage promo. Um, you know, one of the other guys that I really really like in this group is Cameron Grimes. You saw his mm-hmm. whole thing with uh, Roderick Strong and how he's trying to buy the rights of Undisputed Era. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was so funny. That like, was so meta, bro. Yeah, and I, I thought that whole segment was funny because, like, he's not ripping off the Million Dollar Man. He's like a shit hillbilly version of Million Dollar Man. He's trying to do Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase stuff but failing miserably. He's the random, most random combination of wrestlers ever. He's basically Million Dollar Man plus Jamie Noble. Yeah, is he le- I love it, though. So I feel like there's so much that uh, they right? could do with yeah Cameron Grimes and then uh, oh uh, on the flip side Rod- Roddy who's now his own guy mm-hmm. comes out with the most bland trunks and bland jacket and he looks so bland without uh, UE Undisputed we- Era <laughs> which is weird because I always thought Roderick Strong was going to be the breakout star in um, before okay before Carl O'Reilly I really thought Roderick yeah. was like the guy because he had the looks he has the Johnny Cage looks what? you know he really? can wrestle no no I always thought he was bland and now he, without the UE he looks even more bland before he went into the UE you know he was known by this nickname right the messiah of the backbreaker that's a terrible gimmick it's not a gimmick well it's, I would say it's a gimmick but I guess that's the only thing that made him stand out that yeah. I remember like he's good at all these different variations of the backbreakers yeah. so I don't know when he's going to come back to that but he he is like Cedric Alexander and mm. Shelton Benjamin. Yep. He needs UE more than UE needs him. Yep. Um, he right now, so at the end of NXT, he like left and he says he quits. And oh, what? what? So he's probably going to take a break and then come back at some point. Lah. Hopefully repackaged. Um, next up, NXT Tag Team Championship Triple Threat Match. This is going to be fun. MSK versus Grizzled Young Veterans versus Legado del Fantasma. Remember I mentioned uh, the Dusty Roads Tag Team Titles Classic. Uh, I wanted, like, between MSK and Grizzle Young Veterans, I thought Grizzle Young Veterans should have won. Mm-hmm. So, like, this seems like their redemption, like, in this sense. Yep. Because I think this should be the time that they win the okay. title back. Okay. Does Legado Del Fantasma have any sort of a chance at mm-hmm. all? No chance in hell. No chance. In- yeah, I know. They're just two, uh, like, uh, Escobar's <laughs> lackeys, and that's about it. Yeah, they're uh, just there. Uh, Grizzle Young Veterans MSK, who's who's winning? I'm, I'm, my mind is a Grizzle Young Veterans. Man. You think so? I know I, MSK is like up and coming, yeah. got more hype, but I just feel it's unfair that Grizzle doesn't get the title before them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. If they want to pop the crowd, I feel like MSK 
is mm. the pick here. Okay, okay. Hey, we didn't pick between Kushida and Pete Dunne. Huh? Uh, I I think we all win when they fight. That's it. That, I mean, mm. whether who wins the, uh, this, you know, it, it, to me it doesn't matter at all. Okay, but uh, I I personally want Pete Dunne because I just realized that Pete Dunne before this the previous pay per view he was in the main event. Mm. So this is now he's in the opening match. So I it's not it's kind of a step down, you know. No, well the whole point is if you're in the opening match to set the tone, right? So you know that they're gonna go. So don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's move on. Volta versus the Maso Champa NXT UK Championship. I on the face of it, I don't even need to give me a reason for them to fight. I want to see them fight. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, um, I do have one small gripe. What? Can Champa just shave his head again? He looks so weird with this half half hair. Oh my god! Because he has that receding hairline, it, like he's bald on the top, right? Yeah. It looks so weird. I know. I'm like, he, what is he doing? He literally just aged fifty years. Though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I is he trying to make himself look old? Because he looked badass with the bald head and the big beard, right? He looks so good. That yeah, look, it's perfect. And then I don't know why he just started growing out his top head hair, and there's a huge hole and makes him look so old. It makes him. It makes me want to see him lose. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't deserve to win with that look. <laughs> uh, but okay, is there any chance that Tommaso Ciampa wins this? And I don't know. What is he gonna go to the UK to defend it? No, right? Nah, I think I think they just need an excuse to work for Walter to have like a worthy challenger. Yeah, it's gonna be an awesome match, man, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. So and, I, and the thing about Walter is, I do not want him to leave NXT UK. Like, I really feel that like this is his kingdom. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, but here's the thing: he's dominated that kingdom for such a long time. Maybe it's time for him to, you know, drop the title, let Tommaso Ciampa go over there and reign for a bit. Because let's face it, right now Champa is sort of nowhere in NXT, right? He's like mm. hanging out with Timothy Thatcher, but then that's not really a thing. So maybe if Tommaso Champa goes over the NXT UK and builds or helps train the talent there and mm-hmm. gives the rub to people, more people will watch that. So actually, you know, I do see a potential where Champa wins, brings the title over, and then he stays in the UK for half a year, or three months, four months. Uh, I mean... That's not a bad theory, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a great, interesting timeline. Yeah. Um. I'm, I'm. The thing about Walter is that his reign has been so, so dominant. Yeah. I feel like unless he's someone who's really, really worthy, like I don't see a need for him to drop his title. Like it's like the anti Brock Lesnar. Like I don't mm. mind Walter holding it for years and years True. and years. You know. True. Um. The and the only time that he someone should upset him is like someone from within the UK <laughs> becomes a star and Ooh. like upsets the king. Is there anybody in NXT UK that fits the bill right now? Currently? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the title is just a name, right? You don't have to be from the UK to win it. Yeah, so, that's true. That's true. But in terms of European talent, I think there's a lot of undiscovered talent there that mm. might be getting a rub. Yeah. Um, he, 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 what's his name? Ilya Dragunov, is it? Ilya Dragunov, but he, I mean... He's small. La. He's, he's way too small. Unless it's some sort of upset fluke win, la, you know? Um, Tovakin mentions that he thinks that this Volta versus Champa thing might build towards a storyline with Thatcher. Like, what? Thatcher causes Champa to lose and then they feud again? Or, or maybe Walter takes out Champa and Thatcher is the one that becomes the, the guy that takes and wins the title. Because huh? he's a younger guy, right? But they both, they both look old, bro. <laughs> Fuck lah. Yeah, Tesha looks fucking old. But I, <laughs> I know for a fact that he's the younger guy yeah, in yeah, this yeah. group. Oh, um, whole storyline began with Thatcher being recruited to join Imperium. I see what you mean. I see where you're going with that, Tovakin. Okay, mm. okay. Maybe Thatcher joins Imperium. And he fits the whole vibe of the group, right? Because he's a Thatcher stash can guy type of guy. wrestler. Yeah, Matt is sacred, all that jazz. So yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. Dominant faction. I mean, since the UE is out of the picture, the Im- it's time for Imperium to shine. All yeah, right. I, let's, have, w- let's have Walter stay and they can run rough shot finally uh, over NXT. Let's move on. Night 1's main event is Io Shirai versus Raquel Gonzalez for the NXT Women's Championship. Basically, the question is, is it time for Io Shirai to move on? Mm. Mm. Big Mummy Cool. Big I mummy love that cool. nickname, by the way. Oh my God. <laughs> Big mommy cool. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez is really the surprise package of the NXT Women's Division. Mm-hmm. I never expected her to be so dominant and come out looking so badass now. Like, you know, when he, she was recruited, she was so-called the lackey of the Kota Kai, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And it's so weird that 
it's almost as if the tables has been turned. Dakota Kai is like the sidekick now. Well, you see that lends itself to another storyline. So let's say Raquel Gonzalez picks up the women's championship and then mm. you slowly see Dakota Kai like, like getting very salty about it because she was there first. She's the one who should be in line for a title and then she somehow, you know, turns on Raquel and then uh, Raquel becomes face, la, de facto face. So I think it works on many levels for Raquel Gonzalez to pick up the title here. Io Shirai, her title run has been pretty dominant but also she hasn't done much with the title now she has the name she doesn't need the title anymore i feel yeah. like it's time for her to pass this prop that is the women's championship over to raquel gonzalez so that she can have um that whole program with uh the kodakai and somewhere down the line the kodakai can cost raquel gonzalez the title and mm -hmm. she can finally have her you know her shine eo has held the title since last year's great american bash right yeah. So it's almost 10 months. Yeah, Dem I'm going on almost a year already. So Damn um, long. Yeah. The thing is, she's suffering from the Asuka situation mm. where there's not really a lot of word, so called worthy or like on her level kind of competitors. And that's why it seems like a forgettable title reign. Yeah. Uh, Raquel is probably the first one to step up that I felt like, wow, okay, she mm. might give her a run for her money. And Raquel comes from a different breed of women. You know, she's like from the China breed, yeah. Beth Phoenix dominant, big, strong. Yep. I think she'll make a great standard bearer for NXT's mm -hmm. women division going forward. So, and um, whether EO is ready for the main main event scene on the main roster show, I do not know. Um, I think not. Oh, <laughs> not, really? Not because she's not ready. I just feel that there's nowhere to fit her in, in the picture right now that Bro. will do her service. Bro, Kabuki Warriors 2. Uh... <laughs> Unless, uh, uh. one year from now, bro, main event of Raw Division is Rhea Ripley versus Io Shirai. Hey, they've had the history. I think that makes sense. Or who doesn't want to see Io Shirai versus Asuka at some point? Io Shirai versus Charlotte, one-on-one? Yeah. -on -one? Look, I, I feel like it is time. La. Io has done all she can do in NXT, you know? Mm -hmm. so there, mm -hmm. There's nothing left for her to do. If she stays, I think it does her a disservice. So she, at some point, needs to move on to Raw or SmackDown and have a decent run there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, everyone wants to see the Asuka versus Io Shirai feud. Or I, even on SmackDown, Io versus Bianca Belair. Which really she has history with. Yes. Uh, and obviously, Sasha Banks is also a big fan of Io Shirai. Mm -hmm. I mean, wherever she goes, the matches will guarantee yeah. be guaranteed it, to rock, you know? As, as long as they don't... Well, I mean, and that's a big if la they don't botch her in the main event which i mean main which roster scared. yeah which yeah. They, they invariably will we don't have the you know um to me right keep faith. her talking japanese yeah 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 don't have her pull and ask her yeah i mean uh, yeah more like Different the main roster for... isn't ready for women's talent. That's what Div Royalty says. Yeah, exactly. Oh. The, the main roster really doesn't know what to do with it. Even though like on Raw, they have three hours. There technically should be time to give everybody a bit of a shine. And... I, uh, I think ever since Becky left the, the scene, mm. um, he's taken a backseat. For some reason, they don't, they don't really push Asuka. Like, they just know that she's there, she's a champion, and they just leave it at that. Like They never give her stories. Yeah, yeah. They don't know what to do with her, which is a crime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's a very funny thing because uh, Andrade recently did an interview, a tell-all interview right, on why yeah. he left. And he brought up this very interesting comment. He said that he thought the reason he was not getting pushed was because his English is not yeah. there yet. Mm -hmm. But then again, he said, but Asuka's English is not there, but she's still getting matches. Yeah. So yeah. she's com so he's comparing, he's saying that Asuka's lack of English ability doesn't hinder her push. Hmm. But I, I don't think it really puts her to the top. Because I don't think WWE's brass will put a non-English speaking person as their champion or like their main focus on their storylines. Yeah, even though, I mean, historically, I, I actually, I don't know, does she sell a lot of merch? I, I do not know. She, I do not know. she consistently, before COVID, got huge pop. So I, I don't know if it's... Uh... Asuka, her, uh, I think her appeal to the fans is just a respect thing. Like we know she's yeah. a great wrestler and that's it. Mm -hmm. But she can't... What WWE does really, really well, of course, is tell all these great stories. stories. And yeah. like for the main event scene, like if you want to be the main focus on WrestleMania, for example, you need to be able to hold your end on the stick on telling a story. Mm. And I think Asuka will forever be handicapped by her lack of you know, oral ability. Well, I mean, at the end of the day is what kind of story or how you tell these stories, right? So it's really yeah. up to WWE lah, at the end of the day, the writers to come up with something that will feature her, use her, give her a manager, give her subtitles. It's, it's doable. 
It's just yeah, whether you yeah. want to put in the effort into yeah, doing it or not. True. Okay, uh, that's uh, night one. We've talked about Stand and Deliver. Night two of Stand and Deliver, we have a ladder. Uh, okay, I love the setup for this, by the way. Santos yeah. Escobar versus Jordan Devlin. They are both the NXT Cruiserweight champions because remember, Jordan Devlin went back to the UK and then he couldn't travel back because of COVID-19. And yep. then... On last week's NXT, actually, as they were facing off and everything, Shawn Michaels comes out, throws a ladder into the ring. I was like... Perfect. Yes. That's because, perfect, yeah. okay, just a bit of history, and I think most of you know this, but Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon at WrestleMania was a ladder match. They were both the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. So there is like a parallel between that match and the and of course Shawn Michaels being like you know backstage at NXT. It was perfect for him to do this. To it's come like out. a passing of the legacy moment. Yeah, I love it. I was like, oh my god, I see exactly what as a fan of that era, I'm like, I see what you're doing. I hear yeah. you. I am there for this. And okay, this low key might be the 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 match stealer. You know. Yeah, and, and it's so interesting, right? Because I mean, the the card stealer. Yeah. When when it was just Devlin and Escobar, mm. um, it it was intriguing, yeah. but it was lacking that one spark. Yeah. But then when, because I remember watching that live, that episode live, mm. and then when Shawn Michaels music came in, I was like, what? what's Shawn Michael doing here? What's the link? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it then... only took me like maybe another five more seconds when he pulled out the ladder. I was like, oh, oh. it's then like it, it just made the match hundred times more interesting. Yeah. It's like he used his history, his lore. To, he lent them his law and history. And like, this is what you have to live up to. Go. Just go. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit. And we all know that uh, Jordan Devlin it, it can go as a high flyer. We all know that Santos Escobar can go. So it's yeah. like, shit. I don't even need, like, you don't even need to give me too much history. I just want to watch this match now. Yeah, and bro, is can we agree that this is like the most highly anticipated cruiserweight match in NXT slash WWE history? And it wasn't even like a long-standing feud. It's like, okay, there, there's a bit of history with the whole, you know, cruiserweight title bullshit and everything. Yeah. But Shawn Michaels just doing that one action made this match must-watch. Incredible, huh? Like, mm. literally, this, this is a very simple type of booking yeah. that... NXT seems to do really, really well. They give you a reason to want to watch yeah. a match, even though you've never watched a match or you don't know anything about history. Yeah. That's one thing, one spark, and it's good enough. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Shawn Michaels is there and he was part of that, you know, uh, match with Razor Ramon, it, it helps. Lah. Like, if Shawn Michaels doesn't work for WWE for whatever reason, then they couldn't pull it off. Yeah. Right? If, true, we, really, if Regal came out with a ladder to it in there, it wouldn't have the same impact. <laughs> you know? uh, well, they're lucky to have Shawn Michaels in NXT now, I very, guess. Very, very lucky. Um, moving on, Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon versus The Way for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships. Oh, yeah. Before that, doesn't matter, right? Santo Escobar, Devlin, oh, your money is on anyone? I don't care. I really don't. I I, mm. I think they're just going to tear the house down. Whoever wins, wins. Mm -hmm. Um, I love it. I love it when a match is like you can't really tell who's gonna win, but you just know either way you're gonna be happy. Yeah, yeah. I just want to watch the match. You know what I mean? Yeah, Maybe moving dope. forward, it, sh it should be Santos Escobar because he has the most momentum. Like I don't know if Jordan Devlin is gonna stay in the US. Mm, yeah, that's true. And Devlin is a bit. Um, he's not really that exposed yet, so I haven't really found a reason to get behind his story. Mm. Other than the fact he's the first. NXT Cruiserweight Champion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shotzi, Ember Moon versus The Way. This is the least, like, I, for whatever reason, I cannot get behind Candice and Indy. In, Indy Hartwell? Yeah. Um, they're like, my, I think it's because they don't really have chemistry with each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, they know that Candice Larry is trying to put her rub on Indy Hartwell, trying to build her as a star. Mm -hmm. uh, she really seems like the apprentice. Like, there's no potential for her to break out at this point in time. But Still then again, new. okay, this is another, it's like a Cody moment. I don't think Candice LeRae herself has established her, you know, a uh, main event level. I Like, to me, Candice LeRae so far in the NXT world has been mm. upper mid card at best in the women's yeah, division. She's she's never had the NXT women title run. Yeah. That, so, yeah, like, you're right. Like, she haven't had the, that run as the girl, as yeah. the woman. Okay, you know who she is like? She's like a Natalia. Like, Ooh. the respect is there. But in terms of being a star, she's never hit that level before. Interesting. You know what um, I mean? Yeah, you brought a great point though. Um, mm. And maybe that's the reason why the way is just at that level. Like the way is not a main event yeah. faction. Yeah. They seem to be very mid-cut. Yeah. And meanwhile, Shotzi and Ember as well as a team, what do you... I like I love their energy. Obviously, yeah. let, we don't even need to talk about their in-ring like capabilities. Like everyone on the NXT card can go. Yeah. So, but as a 
a, a team as an idea? Do you enjoy what they do? Okay, well, obviously we have to talk about the NXT Women's Tag Team title and yeah. the relevance of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I never saw, but well, like when they started, when they created that title, I was thinking like, why? Yeah. Why can't you just make the Women's, women's Tag Team title part of? It's open to all rosters, what? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so like for for them to be gifted that title initially, well, it's not them, the Raquel and the Kota Kai, right? Got yeah. the title initially. And then they won on the same night itself. They really devalued the title in my eyes. Yeah. Yep. They so, didn't give the initial champions the dominant reign that they should have had. Yeah. But I so, get it because they needed to move on for Raquel to face Io Shirai. Correct. Um, well, the one that suffers is the titles itself. Yeah, the, the the prestige of the title. Mm. So for me, Short C and Short C and Ember. Ember, they are like the new day. Mm. Or they are like the street profits. Okay, I can see then why they are the the, the tag team champions, but they're not the reason why I want to watch the tag team division. Right. They're just a, a, a you know they are good and that's it lah. Like mm. that's, um they are they are not a draw. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that's I, the best way I can say. I almost feel like these NXT women's tag team championships they were created to pull a moment, like a pop a moment. Mm. And then beyond it, it's like, okay, what are we going to do with it? Because okay, you got three teams, right? You got the way Shotzi and Ember, and you got um. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez and yep. the Kodakai. Who else? After that, there's no one else unless they yeah. start to build or make okay, like, teams. Uh, Katie Cadenzaro Kat- and uh, her friend, I forgot her name. Uh, K- Katie uh, and KC. Eh. KC and Katie. Yeah, K- no, KC Cadenzaro. Uh, and- yeah, you know what I mean though, right? But- yeah, the one, the girl with the predator hair. La, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but they are doing their thing with Tian Sha. Or well, Zyari. you just said this, the, the next tag team, Tian Sha. Tian Sha, there you There's go. There's going to be a debut of that weird-ass woman. I do not know who's under the mask. But, but when? She's going to be a wrestler, right? When though? When? It, no, it's... they said they're gonna, she's going to do it. I think this coming... I don't know whether it's... No, no they didn't say this past no, week. No, no, no. They, I don't think... They didn't even show up. Or were they... like? Wasn't there a rumor where a bunch of them got COVID or tested for COVID? Well, what happened on NXT this past week was um, the KC slash K- KC, KT, right? Yeah. They tried to confront the Tiansha lady, right? They tried to walk up yeah. to her, but then they got beaten up by Zaya Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think that might be the story going forward out of Stand and Deliver. Like, mm. that might still unfold a bit more. I think, uh, you know, and you know what it is? They are not ready for pay-per-view. Yeah. That's why they've been contained to just, you know, NXT itself, la, which is fine. Yeah, I, I don't think Zaya Lee, to be honest, Zaya Lee is not ready for, like, a pay-per-view. Her in-ring skill just has not impressed. Okay, she's... She is go- she gotten a lot of help with this gimmick. Like, this gimmick really reinvented her. Caden Carter, there you go. Yes, Kayden it reinvented Carter. her because it made her like an undertaker or uh, where you only need to do three, four moves and that's it. Yeah. And not have yeah. a proper match. But when she's had long proper matches, they just don't work. So what, are you going to have squash matches all the way now? The- Cannot what? So that's why I say like um, at the end of the day, even though the NXT Women's Division is the deepest among all the rosters, mm-hmm. um, not all of them have compelling stories. They are trying to. Yeah. Like I think Sayali is technically an undercut in the Women's Division yes. in NXT. Yeah, yeah. But at least it's compelling. Mm. So they just have to keep building all these characters. Yeah. Like there's this one girl that I really want to see succeed because she's always been the jobber in NXT. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the name? The uh, the one that always hangs out with the Robert Stone friend. Aaliyah. Uh, Aaliyah. Oh yeah, but Aaliyah is not ready as well. Yeah, she's like forever at that stuck at that purgatory, you know. Yeah, she uh, and- she needs time to build the skills as well. Uh, Karen Q is Maying, by the way. So yeah, Maying and Zaya Lee. If Maying is good in the ring, she can hold up the end of the. Uh, Who is wrestling. this Maying? Uh, as like a wrestler, like, has she wrestled before in other places or uh, what? I don't know. I I assume so. Yes. Well, because she's really badass in the way they are being portraying, they are portraying her. So she better deliver, man. Yeah. Stand up and deliver, bro. But, but you know it's going to be, they have to do squash matches, right? You just look at her. Can you imagine if she has to go in and put on a 20-minute classic? No. It has to be like a fiend, like an undertaker. He, she goes in, like yeah. people try to beat her. She shrugs it off. You know, Let, that kind let's of just deal. say for me, like in spite of the in-ring comments about their abilities, I I am... I am I find them compelling TV. Like when they come on the screen, I'm like, okay, I want to see what's going to happen. Yeah. So, so they are a classic example of wrestlers who need a overly outrageous gimmick to mask the fact that they can't go. In the mm, ring. You know what yeah. I mean? Interesting, interesting. Uh, but yeah, that looks like what could be next for the 
tag team division in NXT for the women. Uh, I, I feel like Shotzi and Ember, they retain because the way I don't think they... Like, them winning the titles would do literally nothing. For they, the will titles. Lose, they will lose their way as a champion. Yeah, <laughs> so Shotzi and Ember, they retain the title and then they move on to feud with Raquel and Dakota Kai. And that's where you start putting in your dissension between Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. Yeah. Oh, there's more more props to play around with like in a women's division. I think yeah. the titles. And so, I think that's the only positive. Well, like I said, I don't think anyone else in that division is ready for a title like that. So the four you have right now, Shotzi, Amber, Raquel, and Dakota Kai, mm-hmm. they should go and have a big few. Like imagine Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez become champions as well, tag team champions. So they have so Raquel will have a double championship, give her a massive dominant run, and then at some point she will lose the tag team titles and mm-hmm. then the Kodakai can turn. Yeah. Um, I think at the end of the day, the, the NXT needs to remember that they are there to build stars. Mm. And they ha- they can take as long as they want with some of the talent. Like, they don't have to hotshot them yeah. into prominent pictures. That's why I really like the pacing in terms of the booking yes. when it comes to NXT. Uh, Irvin says, by the way, Karen Q uh, did wrestle at the 2018 May Young Class. Hey, shit, we need to go back and watch that now. Ooh, some nice hidden gems. Okay, okay for sure, for sure. We'll definitely check it out. Yeah, okay. Uh, Moving on, Johnny Gargano versus Night One of the Gauntlet Eliminator for the NXT North American Championship. Do you think it's time for Johnny to drop this to uh, Cam- no, not Cameron Grimes? Dexter? Uh, Dexter Loomis? Yeah, I think it's um, time. I, I, I think it's time because I think Dexter, <laughs> Dexter is one of those characters that you just can't help but love, man. Like, yeah. he's, he's perfect in his role. Mm. Um, and I think he, he needs to show his dominance. I think it's time for his dominance to be validated because he's always been booked as a dominant performer, yeah. but there's nothing to show for it. Yeah. And so this should be, this should be the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the way. No, it is Jordi Gangano's yeah. The Way? Yeah, indeed. Okay, moving on. Um, this, another match that will, has the potential to steal the show, Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. Unsanctioned match. Mm, I think he want to Adam Cole want to one up the girlfriend huh? oh yeah that's why uh, <laughs> actually yeah that sounds like it right so they've obviously built this for quite a while uh, Undisputed yeah. Era blowing up they're gonna fight it out this is the blow off la. so is Kyle O'Reilly winning uh, Kyle O'Reilly has to win to establish him as like he's equal because obviously not everyone still see Adam Cole as the leader of UE, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even though, yes, Kyle really has had an interesting run contending for the titles a couple of times. Now we are seeing, starting to see him in a different light, like he can be his mm-hmm. own man. But they just need to, do you watch this past week's NXT where they had a very great prime target promo? Yes, of course. About their stories. Um, mm-hmm. I thought that was really, really, it felt like a born identity kind of uh, cinematography for some reason. Right, right, right. It's like the dark, you know, in the interrogation room, mm-hmm. like, it, very well built. La. Like, it gave me a lot of context to their story, which I didn't get beforehand. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know what made me so, so angry when I was thinking about this? Like, what? how great it's being presented? What? Like, why can't they do the same vignettes for all the main roster rivalries for WrestleMania? Uh, Fuck. Yeah. They literally could have said, literally, they can just have a sit-down interview with Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre talk about their history. Mm-hmm. Sasha Banks, Bianca Bella talk about their history. Like maybe there's next week on Raw and SmackDown. Just a whole episode were full of like vignettes. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Differalty says, please no Pat McAfee interference. Uh, yeah, they yeah these two just need to beat the shit out of each other, and it's gonna be brutal, probably bloody as well. If like mm. you know, if any match deserves like a blade, this freaking match does and Um, you know to be honest i kind of can see if this like lasted because uh lasted over standard deliver because they have they previously haven't had a proper match right they've just gotten each other's faces so this is technically yeah so technically this is their first match like so i'm like does this have legs to last even longer it could be the rivalry that carries uh, nxt throughout the summer yeah like without a title involved as well so this yeah, yeah. kind of seems like a Gargano Champa thing. It's a blood feud, lah. It's basically Triple H with Shawn Michaels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of reminiscence of this, and also I think Adam Cole. I do not know whether he wants to go to the main roster. Oh no, I no, 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 no! Do not let him go to the main roster. He's too small. They will just put him in some bullshit, and he'll slide right down the card. Like there's, if there's any guy in this list that we've talked about 
who shouldn't go to the main roster, it's freaking Adam Cole. Okay, he's small, skinny, and he's not jacked. Like he is. I get what you mean, bro. He okay. Like honestly, right? Yeah. I don't. Re- you don't really see because in NXT everyone's kind of like smaller size. Yeah. But he has the same physique as X Pac. Yeah. If he was brought like next to Bobby Lashley, next to freaking uh, Drew, McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, he would look like such a boy boy. And here's the thing: he's not like. Uh, I mean, obviously, okay. y- y- you know what I mean, right? Like, his yeah, personality yeah. definitely stands out. But it's like, even next to Mustafa Ali, he's shorter than Mustafa Ali. Didn't he have... He had a match with Keith Lee, right? Adam Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even, yes, he looked really, really small with Keith Lee, but I think he still held his own. He didn't look like he was oversized. Yeah, but old. this is NXT. NXT will allow them these opportunities. You know, in WWE, yeah. in Raw and SmackDown, there's no way he's going to shine. He's going to go there and get swallowed by the Giants. Yeah. My only issue with Adam Cole is I think he has done everything that's, that needs to be done in NXT. Like, yeah. he literally is... He, he won a title a couple of times, really. He really had a faction. He had a dominant run. What else is there for him to do? He, did he win the North American title? I do not know. Uh, I eh? I can't remember, yeah. But well, remember. Uh, to go back to your point of what is he going to do now, he's going to put over talent. He's going to put over Kyle O'Reilly. You see, here's the thing. And this is the difference between freaking Cody jerking off around on AEW, <laughs> thinking that he can put people over. Adam Cole established himself as a main guy. He was a champion. He had his own faction. People loved him. People hated him. He was up there. Right? And now it is his time to put other people over. It makes sense. Okay, wait. So, when they're going to fight, right? Are they going to come out to the UE theme song? Is this, is this Adam Cole's theme song now? Is it like Roman Reigns? He took over the Shields theme song? Yeah, I think he should keep the theme song so he can still do the Adam Cole, baby, whatever shit. And yeah. Kylo... But I hope they give Kylo O'Reilly a cool entrance. Like, I hope it's not some generic rock music. Yeah. Because to be honest, he's wearing like this denim vest thing. He looks quite generic. <laughs> Carl, Carl hasn't had a team song yet, right? His own team song. No, no. It's always been UE, right? Yeah, so <laughs> it, it will be interesting to see unless they start the match backstage and nobody has a theme song. My they problem with Carl, right? Mm. My only problem with Carl is, like you said, he's he's like literally generic wrestler A. Yep. You know, and because he's like not even 10, he's like very pale. So Bro, he's not, doesn't look like a star. Yeah, the problem is him. Actually, the rest of the uh, UE are like that as well. Also, where is Bobby Fish? Will he make a return here? <laughs> Bro, Bobby Fish, right, is forever on the injury list, bro. <laughs> yeah. Fucking injured all the way. His whole faction exploded, he's still at home. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Hey, you know he is the oldest among the four of them? Yeah, he, he looks it, he, makes sense. She, she's like, he's early 40s, you know. So, like, I think the... <laughs> the he's definitely not going to be the breakout star of the city and all. Let's just agree. Um, okay, la, so I think we can agree that this will be a really, really brutal match. It'll be a great match. Yeah. To be honest, I I can see this going either way. Okay. Yeah. Um. Either way, I'm happy actually. Yeah. Um. There's a slight chance that I want Kyle O'Reilly to win for ooh, sure. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Can yeah. let's move on then. Uh, NXT Championship: Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross and Scarlett. Yeah. I what did you think of the Karrion Cross promo this week where he's like all of a sudden Mister MMA? <laughs> um. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay, what, what, what do you want to say? We say both us. have thoughts on this. Okay, Karrion yeah. Cross, uh, what about Fall and Pray? So there was like a, I don't know, the previous Karrion Cross had like a more sinister, more, mm. dare I say, supernatural vibe. Doomsday. Doomsday kind of, thing. Yeah. Like this incarnation, apparently they've moved away from it and like, oh, he's just a badass MMA guy. He's doing judo. He's doing karate. What is he fucking, what's that guy's name? Black belt. Black uh, belt. Oh, Otto, Otto, Otto Rose, Rose. What the fuck <laughs> happened to him? <laughs> Black uh, belt. Black belt. Like, okay. okay. Go. My, my issue is, why did they have to take out that supernatural thing, that, that sinister TikTok prophetic kind of shit? That was the thing that made him interesting. Yeah. That was literally the thing that that defined him and made him into a threat when yep. he when he first came into NXT. Yes. Um, to move away from that, like is is as if Bobby Lashley is moving away from Her becoming business. the dominant yep. business CEO. Yeah, like you 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 lose fifty percent of his appeal. Yeah, yeah. His promo on NXT made me want him not to win. Made me root for Finn Balor more. Like I'm like, oh, what is this MMA guy? And I'm sorry, lah, but he looks like a generic MMA guy. He doesn't look like like anything special. He's not like 
I don't I I don't know. Maybe I'm just judging it too harsh. Um, and is it weird? Like, do you realize that Scarlet is like also not doing all that prophetic, like weird yes. riddles kind of promo? She's kind just of shit? she's now the hot girlfriend. But we already have Penelope Ford for that. Like, why do you have to go down that route, you know? Um, um, I, I don't know what is going on. Maybe he wasn't comfortable with the whole Doomsday Supernatural thing to begin with. And then now... Uh, it, it can't be because I I, I, yeah, I know him. Uh, but I, I, I watched his interview oh. with CVV and all that. And he literally said that he is inspired by cinema and he loves mm. like films and a lot of his character he actually put that into his character so i know that initial character is really all him yeah like i i don't know about you and chat if you agree let us know but this current incarnation of Karen cross is kind of boring okay even if Karen cross had his previous gimmick yeah i will I, I still want um finn bella to win okay okay because okay, here's the, the story right the story is Finn Balor and Karen Cross have this thing in common where they both got injured mm. right after they won the title. They had to vacate it. Yeah. So that's that running threat. Uh, I agree. It's very very unfortunate that Karen Cross lost his title because he was such a dominant uh, guy yep. right after his debut. Won it against Keith Lee, mm-hmm. who is a big rub, and he didn't get to enjoy that run. Yep. And Finn Balor wasn't always part of the plan. He was always supposedly a short term champion. Mm-hmm. Until Karen Cross come back and he was supposed to put over Karen Cross. Yeah. But what Finn Balor has done since he came back to NXT is he has completely reinvented himself with this Prince character. Yeah. Um, he's he became like ten time level of badass. Um, and from a short term, possibly just gonna be a forgettable champion, paper champ. He has become a dominant champ. I think Finn Balor is the standard baron of NXT. Yes. The thing about that is. I think all of that was by design to eventually put over Karen Cross. Yeah. But now that Karen Cross has come back, he has lost so much momentum that I feel if Karen Cross is to be put over in this NXT uh, card, he will. I think it won't be a great moment. Like it will be a missed moment. Yeah, it will be a disservice to the title and Finn what Balor. Finn Balor has done. Yeah, I agree with you one hundred percent on that. I'm just not feeling this version, this incarnation of Karen Cross. And well. Uh, there's no more NXTs to to um build anything. They're like it's literally happening next week. So yeah, for some strange reason, this main event is actually the least interesting match on this night too. Uh, but of course, knowing them, mm. they're still gonna tear the house down. Oh, so yeah, 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 for sure. Um, without a doubt. But like I said, storyline wise, it's like meh. Be- between the two nights, which night are you looking forward to more? Ooh. But you should Ooh. ask the chat about this as well. Yeah, chat. Um, night one, night two. Which one are you like looking forward to more? To be honest, for me, I'm looking forward to night two just because of the ladder match, the unsanctioned match. Mm. Oh, but it's like okay, they split it up quite well in that there are really key matches you want to watch on both nights. Yeah, uh, I mean night one obviously Io, uh, Raquel. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Walter, Walter Champa. Or... Pete Dunn and Kushida. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's gonna be tough. Uh, I I would say mm. because I have my favorites. Mm-hmm. I would say night one for night me. Night one, really? Okay, so it's interesting, right? Because night one is gonna be on the USA Network as well as Peacock, mm-hmm. whereas night two is only on Peacock. So, so you would assume that oh, okay, they want to put their best card on USA one, right? Yes. Uh, like, or they want to create enough intrigue that people want to check out night two, right? Right. That's and- why. It makes sense for mm. them to have like a that conflict eliminator thing on the first episode, so they have a reason to tune in tonight. Right. Two. Um. Why I like night one is because um, I think it's the best mix of styles mm. as mm. compared to the second one. Like, like I, I, I get to see my um super technical match speed done. I get to see like my hard hitting European style match with Walter and Champa. I get to see my main event caliber match, you know, with EO and all that. Uh, the thing about night two, maybe I'm not so looking forward to it is because it's less unpredictable. Right. Well, I mean, you have your hardcore match, which is Kyle and Cole. You have your yeah. high flying match, Escobar, Devlin. You have uh, Finn Balor, Karrion Cross, probably very hard-hitting sort of main event style match. So yeah. I, I think we can all agree, and I think Chad agrees as well, cannot choose. You just have to watch both of them. You know, there's not one yeah. that's better than the other. They both are designed to sort of, you know, lead into each other. 
very very interesting because uh, when we put up a poll on our Instagram mm-hmm. for WrestleMania night one or night two, <laughs> everyone said night two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, at the end of the day, I think NXT. The good thing about NXT is they will, they have always delivered on their takeover shows. Yes, that's I've, right. I've never really heard a NXT takeover show that is like mm. terrible. Like they. <laughs> Could be okay, but not terrible. Yeah, like they set the bar so high. Sometimes I feel a bit worried. Like, can they deliver every single pay per view? But they usually do. So, look, next week is just going to be an exciting week for pro wrestling. So let's just, as fans, freaking enjoy it. Let's yeah. watch the hell out of if, Raw, NXT, Hall of Fame. If you are a pro wrestling fan in 2021, you know that NXT is destination TV. Yes. And also, we got to mention the fact that they are going to move officially to mm. Tuesdays. Um, taking away the pressure of the Wednesday Night War, I guess. But if anything, too, it's... it, it Okay, they're moving because of uh, NHL, right? They're going to yes, carry correct. live hockey on the US, uh, USA Network. But, but if anything, it takes the pressure away. So now they can just focus on doing good TV instead of trying to fight with AEW. And... Because they are the day before, you get your wrestling feel already. Like, there is such a thing as too much wrestling, I feel. And sometimes, yeah. like, if like I've watched X amount of wrestling, it's like, okay, la, I can skip one thing. That's why, yeah. that's probably why I skip or I skim SmackDown a lot. Because I've watched Raw, I've watched AEW, I've watched NXT. It's like, okay, I think I've had my feel of wrestling for the week. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, hey, Van, why you what why you like to binge watch uh, on Netflix or mm. Disney and all that kind of stuff? And I was like, bro, the only thing I watch is just wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally Monday I got something to watch, Tuesday I got something to watch, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and that's not even counting all the YouTube yeah. series, all the network documentaries. Pay-per-views. Yeah. So like um for me, right, this mm. move is gonna do two things. I believe that we're gonna see more uh ratings on AEW being over one million. Oh, really? Yeah, because if the audience from NXT is not watching NXT, right? People yeah. are still going to stay and watch AEW. Okay, so sure. I, people, okay, they're not going to leave because of the show. Mm. They're going to leave because of this is their scheduling time, this is their free day. Mm. So if some people have already made Wednesday night for us Thursday morning their day to watch wrestling, and if AEW is the only thing that's available, I think, I I, I assume that they will, because now they're hitting 800,000, 700,000 yep. and all that. Definitely, I think they will clear 1 million a bit more. Mm. But this also means that there might be a chance that NXT, we can see for sure whether NXT is a draw. Yeah, Are there going to be more people tuning into NXT now that it's unopposed? Is it going to hit 1 million as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, whatever it is, uh, I think it's good. So that if anything, like the whole Wednesday Night Wars wasn't really a thing anyway. You know, it's not like they were yeah. literally fighting segment for segment, like on Raw versus Nitro. Was, um, we can agree that it was less of war, more like a like a beach fight. Ah, uh, friendly competition. Uh, it, it was an exhibition match. Yeah, Let's yeah, just yeah. leave it at that. Oh my god, I went. We went through an entire podcast without mentioning best Booker of twenty twenty. Bro, this is good. This is this is a good step, guys. How can we move on from that? Oh my god! All right, um, less less negativity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then again, we did shit on Cody, like you know. I think I think Cody took the brunt of like the angst at this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we spent so much energy on Cody, we forgot to do best book of twenty twenty. But be that as it may, thank you guys so much for dropping by the chat. What's up, everybody? Once again, we appreciate it. And if you're listening to the podcast on Spotify on Apple Podcast right now, thank you for downloading as well hey hit us up on our social media pages okay we got uh, facebook instagram all kick to the guide if you haven't subscribed to us on youtube yet please do yeah and also for the next couple of episodes uh, this is going to be our scheduling mm. uh we are definitely going to come and do a review of uh, nxc stand and deliver on our usual time next week yeah so Friday. we're gonna watch f- the month of uh, wednesday and thursday shows right back to back uh well you mean thursday and friday Yes, so for what why I mentioned that was because Friday morning will be the night two of yes. NXT. Yes. So technically, we're going to come in live right after NXT finishes. Yes, that's right. Uh, that's and a, uh, we'll talk about it. We'll cover NXT night two, night one, plus preview WrestleMania as well. And then on the Monday of night two, uh, Monday morning, I guess, night two, right, of WrestleMania? Yes. So we'll on, be back. On, so on Friday, we are going to... Uh, be here live right after NXT so you guys can join us for that the week after which is Monday afternoon yep 
right? Night one which is Saturday, right? Night yes. one of Presiden Saturday, then night two is Sunday, which is Monday morning for us. Yeah, we'll be coming in the same time that we came in during Royal Rumble. If you guys remember watching us from the first episode, around eleven or twelve, right <laughs> after Wrestlemania is done. We'll talk about WrestleMania. Yeah, basically after WrestleMania is done, come join us on uh, YouTube as we break it down. Fresh, fresh off of WrestleMania, the WrestleMania hype. Yo, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. It's going to be a great hangout session. I mean, regardless of what's going to happen at WrestleMania, I'm sure you got a lot of shit to talk about. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah. whatever it is, hey, um, enjoy the wrestling from like today all the way till next week is going to be crazy and as yeah. always hit us up on our socials to chat about it okay i think it's time to wrap it up we we were like all right you know we're just going to do a preview today it's going to be a quick episode uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. thanks for hanging out with us for the last two hours mm-hmm. on average we are doing one and a half hour episodes and two hour episodes so this is like par for the course lah. Uh, exactly so so okay um yeah let's go get the hell out of here guys enjoy your public holiday long weekend do what you need to do get rest because next week is going to be wrestling every single day yeah man stay uh, tuned for the hype yeah well, we out yo uh, it's mr young and it's foreign in the building best book of 2020 <laughs> man.